numbers. Hey, welcome to Cleveland Moto Podcast number 484. Light them up, boys. <sighs> and all mine does is... I, I know, mine tinkle, cracked already. Tinkle, tinkle, Oh, I love the tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. I like when you made those uh, Unky Phil podcasts and we gave my... <laughs> I go when you literally turned <laughs> the sound of the rocks in my glass. Oh, we have to do the uh, do beat. We have to do the uh, what you call it, uh, <laughs> fireside chat again, where you're just sitting there with the bourbon in your oh, yeah, hand and you read from the book. Oh yeah, that was that was getting the warm day. and feelies all over again. That's it my is, favorite part do a of Christmas wearing. special. Yeah, <laughs> again, all oh, those yeah. podcasts that we did, the fireside. I I just love them so much. Yeah. And tonight, folks, to my immediate left, we have. Adam DeLellis. Adam, where are you from, son? I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> and to his left, we have... Uh, Steve Sleepy. And to his left... Johnny McElfresh. And to his left... Chris Smith. And behind the bar tonight... Tom Pennington. Yay! It's a Cleveland Moto Podcast. Uh, we, last week, we went live. You know that, if you were there. Yay! We had, a, shockingly, for our inaugural voyage... We had a lot of chat going on, and you were you were participating. Oh yeah, I was chiming in. Yeah, it's fucking great. And uh, we did talk about like at the Patreon level. We do want to make sure that people understand that you can have your voice heard, and Adam's here today, proving that in fact a human voice, a Patreon member does exist. One. I am the proof in the pudding. Adam also asked to say that he did not come with a gun and hold us, uh, res- you know, at bay <laughs> no. to be on the podcast. No, 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 no. I was, I was informed to say that everybody is safe and nothing bad will happen. It is, it is better than that. What did Adam bring? Oh, he brought a bottle, didn't he? He a brought bottle. a bottle. Hey, hand the bottle over to me because I love reading bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan's not here, so I get to read a bottle. <laughs> oh, this is murder bourbon. Straight bourbon whiskey. C-H- kicking H- around one Hondo proof. Nice. Very nice no cask C-H- strength. Oh, so not only does he give us money. Milk Street he brings Distillery. Us bourbon. Yeah, Milk Street Distillery. Adam, no, no. what brings you to Cleveland? Uh, my cousin's getting married. And I uh, flew in for the wedding, which is tomorrow, and couldn't pass up the opportunity to <laughs> invade. What's the uh, wedding said- party doing tonight? <laughs> I'm sorry? What's the wedding party doing tonight? Oh, they're at the uh, rehearsal dinner, <laughs> <laughs> which, yeah. I, which I Irish could buy from. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. He gets extra bonus <laughs> points there. <laughs> now, do you think you would have actually even came to the wedding if you didn't know that you were going to be able to come on the podcast? Um, I'm going to tell you that was... A fair determination. You would have sent a card with 200 bucks in it. Been like, yeah, congratulations, buy it, guys. Buy yourselves a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> buy your way out of that shit. Uh, it is going. I'm not. I'm not joking. Not even one little bit. When I tell you that when Adam showed up today, we were kind of having some. We were talking about stuff at the shop, kind of going through different podcast stuff and everything else. It does remind me that there are human beings outside of our basement that need to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> and it is tough when you get to go like, oh, wait, there's people out there that we care about that are actually throwing this shit back, like at their work day. What do you do for a living? So I'm a field service mechanic um, for heavy equipment. I work for United Rentals. Yay. And uh, you yep. guys are in my truck all the time. So do you have a dually? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have an F three fifty or Chevy sixty five hundred? There Whoa! you go. Sh- rides like a covered wagon. I'm pretty sure I'm going to need kidneys <laughs> in the next three years. Okay, the old buckboard. <laughs> buckboard. So here's the test. Rides like a covered wagon. Counting the doors that the human beings enter and exit from, how many doors are on your truck? The enter and exit from. I mean, counting those. All the little doors. All the little doors. Oh, yeah. God. I uh, know, right? We're, we're Service vehicles are 16, complicated. Oh, yeah. Something like that. 16 yeah, doors. 16 doors, yeah. 16 doors. Um, is your service truck equipped with a welder? Yes. Is your service truck equipped with an air compressor over 40 gallons? Yes. Ah. Oh, yes. Be honest, oh. which one has the weed in it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does your service truck have... Diesel for the vehicle you're not driving. Yes, it does. Fuck wow, yeah, fuck dude. Yeah. That's the real deal. Yeah, had, well done. Sometimes it has diesel for the, the furnace in the house, too. You know, every now and then. <laughs> hey, if the customer pays for it. Yeah. Right, that's great. It's, it's built. So do you do like the GLG lifts? Do you do all the- Yeah, yeah. all the big lifts. The GLG, and, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. Scissors, anything from a pressure washer all the way up to a giant excavator. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. How do you feel about skid steers? Um, I don't <laughs> like working on them, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you had to rescue somebody from a, a, a piece of equipment they rented they probably shouldn't have? Um, it's it's usually when that happens, like it's uh, like a, a 
homeowner who rents it, it's almost catastrophic every time I show up. Usually it's on its side or it's <laughs> upside down. Like they really try. Like I mean, it's, it's, it takes a lot of effort to do the things what's they do. The, to, what is the chief culprit? Is it mini excavators? What is yeah, it? Yeah, mini axes. Because mini they axes. Just, they're like, oh, let me climb to the top, top of this pile and, and, it and scoop some dirt. And while I'm doing it, I'll, I'll go on the side at a 30 degree <laughs> angle. Nothing bad will happen to me. Every time I watch a mini X video, that's some like homeowner oh, who's just setting up a camera in his backyard. It's like, watch me do this thing. I'm like, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa. Yeah. You're trying to like yell at the guy through the YouTube. Yeah. And, like, and meanwhile, a trained operator can put that thing in the back of the trailer with no ramp. Right. People that know what they're doing are magical with equipment. Yeah. It's like an extension of their body. It is. It's they crazy. can pick up a nickel. Yeah. It's fine. However, the general public, the people you're dealing with. The people who rent. <gasps> Oh. We're not shy. We'll take anyone's money. <laughs> Dave Matheson says, getting to disgruntled Patreon members working on bites tonight by chance. <laughs> probably, probably not Dave Matheson. Is Dave Matheson? Yeah. <laughs> is, this, is, this still, is, this is this still the same problem we've been... He we've sent us one. He like sent us... Seven us, times. Okay. For, just so we can be clear. Just so we can make... I, turn... I'll, I'll be legit. Matt Davidson is one of our favorites. He's one of our favorite dudes ever. We love him dearly. He sent us a great message the other day, and I've been saving it. So we'll see. We got a list to go through. If we can get to Matt Davidson's, he sent us a great email. Is so, it Matt Davidson or Dave Matheson? Well, Dave yes. Matheson's the guy we like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. All right. All right. You know if you listen to the podcast. We 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 absolutely do fuck with some people, but they do fuck with us right back. So right. It's, it's all right. <laughs> look, look, look. He's we achieved all- a level of Patreon support that is higher than we, anybody out we, there. We yeah. all like the fucking. We do. We do all <laughs> like us some good fucking. The uh when that that whole idea of being a mechanic you're like, oh, I'm a mechanic. I can work on shit. That's good. That's great. I'm a mechanic. I can work on the car I own. That's brilliant. I never get to work on the car I own. Exactly. <laughs> I'm a mechanic. The next level of mechanic <laughs> is I'm a mechanic. I have to work on other people's shit. Yeah. That's the next level of mechanic. The next level of mechanic is I have to work on shit that people that use don't know how it works. <laughs> <gasps> oh, God. Mm-hmm. And then the higher level of mechanic about that th- than that is military. Because the only higher level than you, literally, the people that are using the equipment are not trained operators. Yes, they're not at all. They don't know. We'll take your money, but good luck on figuring oh, yeah. everything else out. <laughs> I then, recently rented a skid steer and I beat that fucker like it was owed me money. Like, I mean, well, I mean, yeah, I, it's I had, a rental. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I cleared, I was, I tore down trees and stuff. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was back in the back part and there was like these vines <laughs> and I was like hooking them and just wrapping them around it and spinning around till it pulled a tree down on top of me. And then I backed up and ran over it. And it was awesome. Just use the track to clear barbed oh, yeah. wire. Oh, whatever. Fine. whatever. It's, it's just not like, mine. It's just like every, every hammer is, every tool is a hammer. Every tool is a hammer. Brave enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the most, the most miserable person in the world has to be like a mechanic at enterprise. They dropped it off. I had oh, eight man. hours. That thing didn't stop. <laughs> no, no, it's and you know coming out of coming out of the military and sort of dealing with our guys in BMO, battalion maintenance organization, and you're like, oh, you guys are tankers. You're trained. We are trained extensively about what to do and what not to do on the vehicles. Absolutely, nobody can fuck up a day worse than a private. <laughs> A 19-year-old kid can <laughs> screw up. A, I mean, seriously, can't pour piss out of a boot if the instructions are printed on the heel. They will figure out a way to destroy a $3 million piece of taxpayer equipment. That has been designed to not be fuckwithable. And yet, I watch these guys show up all the time. They'd show up in an M88, which is a tracked recovery vehicle that is moderately bulletproof. But it's basically an RV. And these guys show up with all their tools and a very, very bad attitude about life in general, because we done broke something that is literally not breakable. <laughs> and these guys are like, how did you even figure out a way to break that? What's the old, what's the old adage? You know, you could figure out how to break an anvil. Yeah. Oh yeah, for real. <laughs> and all the guys that come out of the military that worked in BMO and battalion maintenance, when those guys come out. And you're like, oh, today you've got a job. Um, we're going to hire you to work with these guys from this crew on this road site or this whatever. 
you can't scare those dudes. They've seen it all. <laughs> what's a, what's the yeah. biggest breaker bar you've ever had to use? Biggest breaker bar? Yeah, because I know on some of that big shit, they got bolts. Like yeah, that. and some of that stuff's torqued to like 400 plus foot pounds. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, geez. Yeah, usually get the, the six foot breaker bar and then the 12 foot cheater pipe. And, <laughs> yep. And then pray that you don't hit yourself in the teeth with it. And <laughs> And then just hook them to each other. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then hook them to each other. Oh, yeah, and then get the Milwaukee. crane off the truck to yank it up. <laughs> Milwaukee <laughs> Milwaukee just sent us at Summit. Justin had it. A yeah. fucking, it's for truck drivers. Yeah. It's a Milwaukee, like. Oh, yeah. Like I've seen this video. 88 volt. I don't know. It's like oh, 48 it's volt times two, whatever the fuck that okay. is. 96 volt. And it's an inch and a half fucking drive. Inch and a drive torque wrench. Yeah. yeah, dude. And it's like, it comes with like. Two, but with a third possible handle. Yeah. So because I get it. it will you have a entire- left hand and you have a right hand. Yep. Where does the third handle go? Between uh, your knees. Right? Yeah, probably so. Ooh. Yeah. You know, having it's, having having talked so to somebody. So that is a true inch like and a half nut fucker. That's break your fucking arms if you're not careful. Yeah. yeah. Having having dealt re- frequently with somebody who deals with very large trucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get <laughs> it. I yeah. see these videos. Because... Yeah. All this stuff goes into my feed because I stand around people who deal with trucks. Yeah. All the time. Right. Yeah. And so Instagram and Facebook are like, you might like this video. And I've seen exactly what he's talking about. It's free. It is literally, you know, almost a NASCAR. Here I thought you guys just sat around and jerked each other off with fifth wheel grease. I yeah. didn't, I didn't think it went any deeper than that. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. You know, I mean, Rob two TK from uh, San Diego. That's new. Hey, yeah. he uh, checking in with us. Hey, he yeah. Can't, can't quite drink with us yet. He's got to work two more hours. I uh, told Tom he was in charge of watching these, and it well, clearly yeah, that literally just popped up, and Johnny Mac uh, caught it on the fly. He got it like Ooh, a you fucking know, seagull on he, a French fry. And no. the fact that somebody is working for another two hours and can't drink on the job means they need a different job. <gasps> I like this. This is a good healthy competition, which means that we're going to get a better <laughs> hey, experience. Hey, if Johnny Mac yeah. wants it. I'm going to let him have it. Yeah, oh, I'm right there with you. Sleepy. I'm Team Johnny Mac. <laughs> you know what? I'm I Team like Johnny it. Mac. Like oh, Can't man. accept defeat like that, Tom. Uh, oh, yes. Don't you dare give. Me I got, that. I got loyalty, man. Don't you give I up that. loyalty. Don't you give up that. He's, suit, got, son. he's got the he's got the age and the wisdom. <laughs> My goodness, and the looks and the looks. So, so uh, you know what's weird? So because we're doing this live, I went ahead on on the podcast uh, Facebook group today, and I put the show notes up, uh, yeah. knowing that these. Um, Pinnacles of society. There we go. Honestly, um, <laughs> only the finest and longest members, I mean, longest duration members right. of our podcast they would go there the longest. and they would literally look at our Facebook uh, page for Cleveland Motor Podcast and they would know in advance what we're going to be talking about. So they're standing by prepared to chime in at yep. any moment when we get something wrong. He only took tips. Mm-hmm. And I think that yeah. when it came right down to it, and I was like, okay, well, I don't know if it's a good idea giving everybody the keys to the castle. Yeah. Well, it turns out, I think it'll be fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it'll be good. In fact, I'm also willing to believe that there are people out there that are waiting for us to slip up. Yep. So they can put on their white hat and show us a thing or two. Ah. Uh, I don't want to see any. Okay. I don't want to see a whole lot of people's penises. I don't think they have the ability to do that, do they? I, I don't know. Let's Maybe find out on this. Let's find out if somebody has the ability to send us a, uh, a dick pic through the chat. Right. Right. I oh, mean, okay. who, the only people are going to know are the people here right now. Well, they so. can go to the Tom Pennington at gmail.com. Oh, okay. Right. right. <laughs> well, I was thinking about okay. uh, Sleepy's uh, <laughs> OnlyFans, you know, his discords, his secret discord server. Send all oh, your complaints yeah. to motorcycles and misfits <laughs> <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> right. That's, That's how right. it works. So right. So how about and, those new, uh, that new uh, KLE 500? Yeah. <gasps> It's like Johnny Mac it's, read the notes. God, I love it when you understand the assignment. <laughs> yeah. It makes me so happy. It's so cool. <laughs> and it's, it's the oh, E man. or the L? What, it, what is it? The five L E, not a K L R. E. Yeah, right. E. Yeah, K L E. It's I the wonder, one that we usually don't get. Here, I wonder right? why you've never heard of it because mm. it's not usually here. Because we are not worthy. Right. Much like oh, the KLX. Again, we're still not worthy? Well, we weren't in this case. That's for damn sure. Right. Aww. Right? So I really do. We suck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> long and short of it is this, that for you a very- show me that picture of that Figaro. I'm going to have to buy one. <laughs> Your Nissan keeps popping up. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> so that is, that's real. That's the thing that's happened is that in- the European market since 1991. Yeah. They've been able to buy 
uh, Ninja 500 slash Vulcan 500 parallel twin liquid cooled motor. Do you think it's the same motor out of the old EX 500? Just, I mean, I do. It's the exact same. That's, motor. that's how they got three emissions. Dude, yeah, that bike, right? my buddy, when I had my Honda Hurricane 600, he had the, the original EX 500. And it sounded like a fucking lawnmower. Like it, the original one was I'm not so joking. bad, dude. It was, the worst Vulcan ever produced yeah. was the EX500 Vulcan. Yeah. yeah. The but, it's still, Vulcan, but it's still the best one ever produced. But it's the best one ever produced. <laughs> so it's it the is same this, motor as the Ninja 500. It's beautiful. It is a sensory oh. deprivation cruiser. It has the wrong number of cylinders. Oh, I'm sorry. It has the right number of cylinders in the wrong configuration, surrounded by water. In the power band that only works in a light but, sport bike. But we have said that the best configuration oh. today is a dual is a dual cylinder water cooled motor. That's it was the most ahead efficient. Of its time. Right, it right, was right, ahead right. of its time. Um, I had a customer at my shop that was very much uh, not ready for prime time. He was not ready for a big cruiser. He had a scooter and he was really good with that. He was a Navy veteran CB. He was 131 years old and he was one of the most absolute straight up delightful guys I'd ever met in my life. Okay. Which is and weird that every CB is like 130. Scott from small adventure. Sport, uh, Harley Bob's Moto not. adventure says he misses his small See, he ninja. Does. He misses I, his small ninjas. Right. Yes, absolutely. And Kevin Nixon, my buddy had like four of those at one point. He yeah. was using them for track bikes. Yeah, yeah, 500 ninjas. Ninjas. I'm not Great saying they were a bad so, bike. I'm just saying they sounded like a fucking lawnmower. Right. Like it was really funny because sensory experience was not part no, of the no, design no, guide no, at no, all. We just right? want to, I mean, right. We're going to get, let's go back to your CB first. Cause we're going to get off track. What? Well, you were t- you're CB. What I'm saying is Mr. Tolhurst, yeah. in his declining years, in the twilight of his life, yeah. really decided he wanted to have a cruiser. Yeah. And after being around him for a while, I went, you know what you need? The least likely cruiser to hurt you. <laughs> and since you want to go on the freeway, I cannot recommend a Rebel 250. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I said, if, you, if we can find you a, a Vulcan 500, I think we should buy you one. And we did. We found him one. And it's not like they hold their value because they don't. Oh, no, no, no. Right, right. But they're, they never get lower than $1,200. They're perpetually used and they're yep. perpetually about 1600 bucks. Yeah. And we found him one and he proceeded to farkle the fuck out of that thing. Yep. He put every, you know, Bagger Brothers Incorporated, Willie and Max, he loaded that thing up to do cross-country travel. Yep. In Argentina, they call the EX500 the singer. What? I don't know if that's because I did not know about it, that. For it, the singer sewing machine? Probably a sewing machine. Or because reference. it sings a song so, as it rides. Again, it's be Argentina. Better. Yeah. But yeah, I did not see it. that coming. You yeah. know, you ever yeah. be on a ride or something, you look over at a gas station and there'll always be that dude that has like the whole but it looks like it's like a fucking giant Harley yeah. bagger and it looks like it's done like two hundred thousand miles yeah. and the dude is completely decked out yeah. in like hardcore bagger gear. I and it's like a two fifty. It's a Virago like, two fifty. Oh, no. My right favorite on, man. My favorite was I had this guy who literally was old, two days older than dirt, and I'm not lying. And he had a V nine two C victory. And it would it had everything you could buy to put on it, but like everything from the discount clearance aisle. Of like parts of uh, advanced auto parts, it was hysterical. But <laughs> like, so, go those, ahead. Oh, well, I was gonna say those guys just go crazy, but they're perfect. Like they have every trucker light on them. They have like well the mud flap girls and stuff. It's just great. The power band. The um, singer is from the sewing machine. It is. Oh. Wow, man, that that's so funny that uh, Argentinian marketing department said, <laughs> "Do you know what? Do you know what we're gonna emulate? Another company's product." <laughs> right. that, that is exactly I, I'm it. not sure that the, the company did that. He said oh. the nickname for it. Oh, it was a nickname. Yeah. Okay, that makes you sense. Know, John, that makes why sense. am I monitoring this? You were on top of this more than I Is that motor the successor to the 454? I think it is. Yeah, I think you they're had, in the same wheelhouse. You had the, same, um, same yeah. motor. the 454 went away in the 500 the, Vulcan the show four, came, came had, in, right? What was, was the 454 LTD? I had that one, which you yeah. could not run without the special airbox. And it yes, they ran horribly. I learned that the hard way. Yep. They did. Yeah, they did. So at uh, EICMA, we'll be talking about EICMA a little oh, bit. If so you're many bikes Milan, released. Yeah. Milan. So many right. bikes we're not going to get. I got, uh, so I'd like to, I take issue with this. I mean, what the fuck is that? Okay. So what John's pointing to, and you probably can't see, <laughs> that's, that's is a, a picture that's taken Cal- from the. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, so, that's the Kawasaki KLR650 new model for the campers. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. So what Kawasaki decided to do, because the motorcycle is not quite ready to be released to the public yet. What Kawasaki decided to do was to take the box, my motorcycle and put it in a box. They just gave and you a tip. I've, I've seen this before. Uh, you know, usually it's not a, f- yeah. Look at, they, yeah. Just, they just put the tip in. Just okay. to give just it a little tip. taste. Okay. The but Kawasaki Winnebago. Was that, oh, Kawasaki yeah. was not fucking around. That's they that put parallel a, twin with that stupid ass exhaust pipe with the, with the S bend. Yes. So Kawasaki put the bike in a box <laughs> to hide all the part they're all the parts they're worried about CF Moto stealing. Right. That's except, why they put it in a box. Except for CF Moto is building that bike for them. So Be, no, they're not. <laughs> oh. Unless you have facts to back that up, this uh, is no. not the time to say such no, a thing. This is just speculation. Right. Yeah, that is that is the worst form of speculation. <laughs> we got to start saying what is it? Uh, the opinions and such of Tom do not necessarily do not reflect, reflect the opinions <laughs> of the Moto Podcast. So as it as it happens to turn out, um, a lot of times at ICMA, when a company comes out with a, a really cool product that's groundbreaking, earth shattering, and super cool, if you really get your model beyond the clay stage and you actually build it up and you got a working prototype, what they call a phase zero prototype, you bring it out, you bring it out to a show called ICMA in Milan because it's early in the season. Motorcycle shows in the United States tend to be later in the season, January, February. ICMA's early in the game, October. Okay. And if you are bold enough and brave enough to bring your working prototype, your phase zero prototype out to ICMA and let the shine, let the sun shine on it and let journalists have an entire day to take pictures of it and measurements and shit like that and scan it with laser 3D scanners, then I assure you in less time than it takes you to get this product to production through EPA or whatever testing, the Chinese will have it out. Oh, yeah. For half of the money you're charging. Yeah. And you will get fucked with your own design. And congratulations, good job you went to ICMA with something that wasn't literally on the market yet, and you just lost that market. It happened to Honda more than once. Dude, and so Honda got careful about it. In the RC industry, like the radio yep. control industry, when, in the 10 years I was in that industry, you would see the same thing, like this brilliant air, airplane designer. Like they, he'd leave like some fucking job at NASA and take his life savings and get with a dude and they'd fucking send this design in and it would get stolen and then sold for 300 bucks a pop on eBay, you know? Yeah. And, and everybody'd be like, oh my God, the mm. horror. And it's like, this is a lesson to the industry. Don't let this. And like within three days, it was like, such and such has a new airplane coming out. And then two days later, it was like a copy of it. It was like every two years, the cycle would hit. And you're just like, how can these people do the same fucking thing over and over and over? And they always did. When you successfully punch Honda Motor Company in the dick. Everyone else will pay attention. Oh, I'm sure. When Honda loses $39 million, everyone else will pay attention. And many years ago, Honda showed up at ICMA with a sweet ass little scooter called the Honda Joker. Oh, God. <laughs> And long before Honda I could get see, their... Can I see the Joker? What? I want to see the Joker. Oh, I'll... I'll oh, the Honda, Honda Joker. Joker. I'll, I'll do that for you, buddy. Thank you. So the little Honda Joker, sco- Joker scooter <laughs> yeah. was not like any other scooter that had been produced to this point. The Honda Joker scooter was different. It was special. It was no joke. And when I pull this up and I throw this on the table, on the screen, everybody's going to go, I know that bike. I know that bike. Okay. But what you don't know, though, that bike as is a Honda Joker. Right. You never got to work on one, Tom, that had a Joker nope. badge on nope. it. Nope. I have never worked on a Honda Joker. You never got to work on one nope. that had a Honda Shadow badge on it. Because Correct. Because believe it or not, in the Japanese market, this little bitch was not called Honda, Honda Joker. It was called Honda Shadow. Yep. No, I'm. Yep. So here we are. So when we have that situation, when we kind of think like, we're like, oh, you know, Honda's pretty good at understanding the market. Honda's pretty good at being a motorcycle developer and a manufacturer, right? Honda's been doing this for a day or two. This was the point where Honda realized that they were no longer the first dog he in the sled up. dog race. I, I would, I would, I've worked on so many copies of this bike so but i will also say i would love to have a real honda joker but you can't but i can't okay so this is the problem what happened china so what happened 
in this particular in this particular instance, make sure that's showing up there for the folks at home. Yep. Uh, what happened in this particular instance was they showed up at the motorcycle show. They showed up with this bike. It was a phase zero prototype. It was yep. about to happen. Yep. Uh, and the Chinese were all there with their cameras. And the Chinese had managed to get this bike to production before Honda could get this bike through EPA and DOT and European TUF testing, et cetera. Yep. Now, that's a problem. And the problem for that is when Honda came into the market with their 50cc or 125cc bike at $4,000, they were competing with six different Chinese companies that had the bike out at $1,299. And because the bike is distinctive looking, they were fucked. Because everyone went, why should I buy that bike from Honda when I can buy that bike from any goddamn buddy else for a half or a third of the money? And that's where the fail point comes we, in. We currently have in our hallway. It tried to kill Stumpy John. The BMS Heritage, right. yeah. which is a pattern copy of the Honda Joker. So the reason you've never seen this bike at your Honda shop, your Honda dealer, your whatever, okay? So it never went into production? It did go into production, okay. mm, yeah. but because they had sunk costs. So they had sunk costs. They'd done the tooling. They'd done the work. They'd done the research and development. They'd done the market surveys. They'd done all the stuff. They'd done everything they needed to do to bring this bike out. And the problem was a bunch of Chinese guys with cameras went, we have a way to sneak a motor that we've already paid for underneath that body work. Yep. And it came out from <clears throat> no less than four manufacturers at the same time and believe me, those guys had my phone number. Yep. And I could buy that bike from any one of four different guys for nine ninety nine my cost. When the Hondas were hitting the markets in Europe, begging for people to give them three and four thousand dollars for them. So I have I've worked on this bike as a BMS, a tank, a red streak, a TNG low boy, a fly scooter, a TNG low boy, yep. and I think that's a. I mean, I've worked on a couple of other odd, like off brand, but they're usually all Zenens or Bashan or somebody like that. And this is all the same bike. It's all GY6 powered, one twenty five or one fifties, and it's all the same. But if and you want to lose a lot of respect in my shop, say the word GY6 and not know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yep. Because I'll be happy to tell any single one of you, you come into my shop and be like, well, you know, it's a GY6 motor. Cool. I'll give you 90 seconds. Tell me what a GY6 motor is. And I guarantee you're fucking wrong. Because if you come in and be like, oh, you know, we took my Honda Grom and we put yep. a, a fling poo GY6 motor under it. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. I can show you what a GY6 motor is. I know what a Honda GY6 motor is. All the motors that are out there that y'all are calling GY6 motors are not Honda GY6 it's, it's motors. It's the same with the QMB. It is literally you going, if it's soft and I can wipe bugger, boogers off my face, it's Kleenex. Yep. But it ain't. You cannot Xerox a Xerox. Exactly. So let's go back to the next one. <laughs> Do you know who, in my opinion, was the worst asshole who stole the Honda Joker? No. The Aprilia Habana. Yep. Because in this particular instance... Yep. The theft, the, well, the, the Aprilia Habana, mojito, and the Aprilia Mojito, it's same thing, yeah. Right. Well, the handlebar the, is the only difference, right, exactly. The Habana, in particular, is another pattern copy, again, photo representation yep. of the Honda Joker slash Shadow, and it it does me no fun to say like, in case you thought that the Chinese were the evil ones. Well, it turns out that the folks over in Italy were just as guilty and they stole that bike. And going back to this whole thing about motorcycle shows, going about with who, you know, who did who, who did what? Is the Kawasaki EN500 built by CF Moto? Is it built by somebody else? Well, guess what? We're not going to know about that right away. Uh, I mean, it's it's ugly, but it's true that these things, this stealing from each other is so lucrative. It is such a big deal that a company like Honda came to the tick. They, they showed up and they did what they're yep. supposed to do. They're going to tell you about a new product they have. But the long and short of it is by showing you the new product, they got fucked by it. Yep. Now, you want to know why Kawasaki puts their bike in a box. 
It's exactly that because they don't want to have a $37 million loss by getting second to the market with something they designed. And looking at going back to the, can you get back to the picture? Yeah, absolutely. Let me go ahead and pull that yeah, up. Of the, of the KLR, because let's stay on topic. <laughs> yep. As we do. Yep. <laughs> but uh, looking at that picture, what you're literally seeing is just forks on a front fender and a 21 inch wheel. And I think they're showing you exactly the part of the motorcycle they needed to show you. Yeah, what else do you need? I mean, well, well, well you can look through there. You can just tell you the it's motor. Kawasaki's well, I mean, Tenere 700. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it looked exactly like it could be a yeah. desert sled. It could be a Tenere. Right. It could be anything. So what do you know? You know <laughs> it's 500 cc. And it's like, going to look like a, a dead corpus. A, I like those cool graphics. And it's a parallel twin. It yeah. is best we can tell unless it's a four valve. It's probably going to be a great fucking bike. <laughs> well, I mean. You know, it's so going to be a CBR 500 X. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically. I wonder if it's a 270 crank. Exactly. That's another good question. So what they're showing you in, in, in my opinion, what they're showing you is exactly what they need to show you that in 2007 or whatever, uh, that was when they killed off the KLE 500. Right. And what they've said is the money's in the mid range. We all know that the money's in the mid range. Now, what but, Mecklefresh should be screaming right now is, why isn't this a 650? Well, because they already have one. Right. Do they have a KLE 650? <clears throat> I don't. But here's here's something I just thought of, right? So they're they're showing the front mm -hmm. part ish of the bike, right? Mm -hmm. And so the Chinese or whoever can look and see that it's pretty much the standard fare for pretty much every inventory bike out there. They know what motor's in there. So they, they, they change something. There's something that they're hiding that's going to change the look of what adventure we know. I think that's you what think? it is. <laughs> but like, seriously, it's going to be some hey, kind of. Hey, like, John, what do you want to bet? It's just a Versus underneath that, underneath that box. No. Uh -uh. Uh, they no, did something no. different, man. Like something like I just hit me. Like it's not going to just be a small change in like a, a panel. I mean, it might be what, pe what people would like or what I would like would for it to be like a KLR 650 twin. And so that's going to be a KLA, uh, KLE 500. You know, you know, you might have something there if they finally build a if they finally change the KLR 650 into a dual a twin cylinder. Hey, John, how many horsepower does a KLA, or I'm sorry, a KLR 650 have? I don't know. Like 10, 40, 36, <laughs> 15. I mean, not a lot. Six and a half. Back in year of our Lord, 1991, <laughs> the KLE six, the KLE 500 had 48. Yeah. That's more. Yeah. Yeah. How many torques does a KLR 650 have? I don't know. All 31. Okay. The KLE 500 in year of our Lord, 1990, whatever had 40. So the KLE Parallel Twin 500 has been outperforming a KLR 650 for going on 30 goddamn years now. Okay. So the only thing that here in the United States that we have that would compete with those exact numbers has been things like the V-Strom 650. Yeah. Um, and we have a Versys, but a Versys has 17 inch wheels, uh, you know, a Versys a KLE 650 would probably make everybody really happy because that would be the KLR 650 twin that we've been asking for for a really long time. Mm -hmm. But if we look at even a 20 year old or 30 year old KLE 500, it's actual production horsepower and torque was such that it did outperform many of the <clears throat> Triumph Scrambler 400s. All of this whack, I mean, we talked about last week, the baker's dozen of the 350s and 400s that are out there right now that every manufacturer is leading hard into. Can you blame Kawasaki for going, you know what's better than a 400? Oh, I got a 500. All right, Mike. But you know what? You're, you're, <clears throat> hang on, hang on, hang on. Mike Waddle on the chat way. says technically the Versus 650 is the KLE 650. I never said KLE. I know. Yeah, yeah. I get I'm just it. saying he's yeah, I mean, he's he's reporting in. No, I get it. He's got a good point. Maybe right. that was right. They it had is. The, they had that yeah. old the old ninety one right. KLE six hundred. Right. 
they boarded out, and that's what eventually became the mm-hmm. Verses. But mm-hmm. but the guys that really want that, like, there's a, a thread on Adventure Rider where like these guys have been making. I, I forget the guy's name. They're now, in New Zealand. Like gravel grinder. Oh no, the no, gra- no, those are the gravel, gravel grinder mm-hmm. guy, or whatever. But they take that, you know, that engine. They take mm-hmm. a different swing arm. They use different forks. So they're making basically the twin KLR six fifty. Yeah. You know, actual good motor can last for forty two billion miles. Oh, fucking yeah. off road bike, you know. Yeah. So. My uh, my point in all this is Kawasaki is doing something. They're returning to the crypt, right? The KLI, the KLE 500 that we never got here. And, you know, when you're looking at the Versys, the, you know, the L model, the LT650, when you're looking at that bike, you know, yeah, it's 17 inch front wheel really does prevent it from being a bike that you could use as an adventure bike or whatever, right? Mm. I'm happy to see a 500cc from Kawasaki in a parallel twin liquid cooled configuration. I'm and really it, happy to see it. I figured it out. And that's a 21 inch front wheel, right? Yes. It oh is. yeah, it's a big <laughs> wheel. I, I figured it out. Yeah. It's a three seater. <laughs> <It's a three-seater. laughs> I mean, what are they going to do with this thing that you can't hide the plastics on it? There's a, um, there's something a giant, different, something giant alien tank that like wraps around your head. There's a airbag on it. No, I but think it, about it. Like I'm sure, like when uh, uh, Svit Pillen or whatever the fuck those Svart bikes, Svart Pillen, when they were about to drop those, I'm sure that they tried to keep that under wraps because that's like they were trying to yeah. change the look of motorcycles. You and, know what I mean? And whether you love it or hate it, they did. I, yeah, right. I really do. The Svart Pilon, what was it? The Svart Pilon and the, Vit there's another spillin'. one. Vit Spillin. Vit Spillin. Yeah. They, they actually. <laughs> the gold arrow and the silver arrow. They okay, actually, <laughs> they actually look the Victor really, Spillin. really cool. And, it, and the CF Moto that Sleepy jerks off to every night before right. he goes to bed with that dual headlight is similar in its design and they look really, really cool. Wait, which the, so oh, the I can Pito? tell you something, guys. I love the look of the old one. Yeah, that's what's not under the box. Oh, oh a Trans Alp? No. I mean, a, KLE, like, a KLE 500. I mean, it looks Fuck. like a Why don't we ever get that? I mean, it looks like a Trans Alp. Well, we haven't gotten that since 1991, Sleepy. <laughs> oh, man. We've never gotten that. That's right. what I'm saying. I said, why don't we got that? Because they decided oh. we shouldn't get that. <laughs> All was right. That? Because of that? you, Sleepy. Oh, yeah, probably was. They, they hate. Sleepy. They intentionally right. hate you. They intentionally decided that we shouldn't get that bike. That looks but like a Yamaha I dumped at uh, Barber a couple years a ago. TDM like, TDM yeah, right. totally. okay. It's a TDM five hundred. Totally. Eight fifty. It's a TDM five hundred parallel twin with their CD okay. fucking jet ski seat. But what I can race. promise you is this: that nineteen inch front wheel and seventeen inch rear wheel, or whatever that configuration is, that's what's not under the box. Uh, no, that's what's not under. Look the how box. short that swing arm is too. Oh, that yeah. motherfucker's like. Yeah, that's what's not under the box. Now, I will be happy to show you what I kind of hope is under the box, yeah. but I know it's not under the box. And I'll show you guys this because I love you and I want you to have funny <laughs> dreams. Uh, Murder. That's what's under the box. All right. Are you ready? Box. Oh, man. I, I'm just so happy I'm going to do this. Sleepy's going to just make some noise. Oh. So that's what's probably under the box. Oh, the KTM? Oh. That's a KTM adventure. Those are Yamaha. Are they? No, those are Kawasaki KLE 650s oh, oh, oh. that are done by oh. a mad genius in New Zealand oh, who yeah. literally oh. makes a motorcycle that uses the KLE 650 motor, or I'm sorry, the KLE 500 motor. And that weird ass KTM uh, preferring, apparently. Oh, that's just a tower. That's a rally tower, dude. That's a rally tower. Oh, yeah. So, but here's my point. What's under the box is not what you saw behind curtain number one. Hey, no. What's behind curtain number B is probably something that looks a little more like this. Yeah, that'd be dope. Which is the true Perry Dakar built to do the job. Well, and it would be their answer to Honda's CRS is, fucking rally or whatever the fuck it is. Oh, that they no. haven't talked. Like Kawasaki's watched that fucking thing sell for how many years now? Yeah. All right, hang on one second. Yeah, I'm oh, gonna. I'm that gonna, would I'm make gonna, sense. Oh, now I'm excited. Bring it on, Tom. Yeah. I'm gonna make you a little upset because this came in from jo- Joshua Clark. Mm-hmm. And the problem is we cannot see the big. T- they cannot see the big TV on the chat. Why not? So they can't. So they can't. They, no, the camera. Oh, the camera. The camera oh, yeah, does not let get, them see it. They can't see the big TV. So gonna, you know what? You we're, know, gonna, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna have big, to fine tune that. We're gonna have to move the big TV up here. So what you're what you're not seeing is basically you're gonna have to tune it. Hold on, hold on, folks. I've got something for you, baby birds. Phil's got it. I got something for you, baby birds. It's okay. 
It's every better reason for you to watch the YouTube release of the finished product. Right. <laughs> so you can hear all the details. And you can match. All John yeah. snores. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. yeah, all John snores and farts. <laughs> when, when, Sleepy when, puts it up on the, when Sleepy puts it up on the YouTube, you're exactly right. Thank you. And that makes an excellent point. Well done. Well done. Well played. Okay. Very good. Oh, that's a brilliant thing. Excellent. Actually, you could probably see it if you were a super patriot. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he's sitting right here. If you'd only look behind the paywall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, Adam's proof that he gets he to see all this shit. He was yeah, in I his basement 15 minutes ago. He was at home. He hit the fucking button. Boom. I'm right here. <laughs> it's, it's six feet away from Adam. He's got it. He doesn't even put his readers on. If Kawasaki comes out with something that looks like that, that would also alleviate anybody who loves the look of the Desert X but doesn't want to pay desert x money that's yes. right and also if you if you find yourself hard <laughs> if you find yourself saying a hard no to cf moto and ktm right well oh, oh there's your tried and true japanese your tried and true with and you know uh, what italian look the only thing that can make it better japanese is if money. it was green right so does anybody right. have so like you you have a lot of like this hearsay and stuff but yeah. in 2024 around this era yeah how is KTM's maintenance intervals on their bikes and things like that? Are they have they pulled that shit together? You're gonna like- have to fine tune that statement a little bit, my friend, <laughs> because now KTM lives on three different channels. Yep. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. All right. So we have to acknowledge that KTM represents three different streams of manufacturing. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we know that there's the top stream, that just still made by the Austrians. Yes. Right. And those are going to be the absolute most cromulent power to weight ratio is going to be of the gods, razor thin, literally your name had better be on the side of somebody else's truck, right? (laughs) You know what that means? Yes. Right? Remember the joke. How far your name is from your body tells me how important you are to society. If your name is on your shirt, Not very important to society. If your name is on your desk, not very important to society. If your name is on your door to your office, getting better. If your name is on the building, well done. If your name is on the blimp over the building, very well done. In in our world, if your name is on your shirt, all right. If your name is on the street sign. Oh, the street sign is very good. If your name is on the truck, good. If your name is on somebody else's truck, very oh, good. At some point, a lot if of your this name is on evil, your, man. <laughs> if your name is on your baseball hat, not great. If your name is on somebody else's baseball hat, really fucking good. <laughs> yeah, but at right? that point, can we talk about like... If your name is on a women's <laughs> size medium... Belly yes. tank shirt. Yes. <laughs> if your name is on a dog bowl, congratulations. Well okay. done, sir. <laughs> well done, sir. I'm if just, your name's on a country. <laughs> no, no, I'm not talking about artists or stars that have earned it. Right. But on the side of a dumpster. If your name's on the moon. <laughs> dude, if your name's on a building, you've probably fucking deserved to be shot. Well, like, you know what I mean? Like, you're not, you, you didn't get there by not fucking over like a billion people. You're just trying to alleviate taxes. Yeah. Wait yeah. till I change the Christmas lights here on Casa del Tom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, what? Cleveland Moto. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. 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 It's all about the marketing. Well, I've got the new Spaceballs go. Spaceballs bed sheets. Spaceballs. <laughs> Space balls. The I was sheets. thinking of more of like yeah. a Wall Street, like giant I know, I, sucker I building. Know. That, Dude, that was a the local idea. owned business. I think that we I know appreciate. exactly who you were Sleepy. thinking about. I didn't yeah. say that. Fuck all. Without <laughs> one person at this table got here way earlier than you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's okay. All right, that's we right. understand. You're medicated. No, yeah. yeah. oh, that's cool. That's yeah. Okay, so again, nothing, this? nothing wrong with that bike from 1991 to 2007. What, what is that called again? 16 years of building a KLE 500. Mm. 16 years of John not having one. And for that, there will be no fucking forgiveness. Yep. Right? No justice, no, no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. So that's that's a big deal. All right. Moving on. <laughs> this bike, Honda, Free, no gold Freeway drums. reports in, merchandising. Merchandising. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is exactly what it is. <laughs> merchandising. Uh we want to talk about Chinese a little bit about Vogue. Oh God, Say there's who? a name I haven't heard in ages. Actually, Vogue. Vogue. Strike a pose. Vogue. 
It literally is called Vogue. Strike a pose. They they did um, the early tanks, and I think the early um, folk did some shit. The right, early right. the early ba- What is it? It's a it's couple not, the Bajas that advanced auto oh. parts sold. They've they've done some parody car the fun Vogue, stuff. The Vogue two hundred and sixty was a Lin High motor, which was a basis of the Reflex two hundred and fifty. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Okay, Vogue. Anyway, Vogue. Okay, okay. Well, since then, Tom. Since then, CF Moto has actually produced things that aren't garbage. Bust the move. <laughs> Well, Tom, have you ever put that much air underneath your CF Moto fashion? God, God I wouldn't want to because okay. the fucking frame it. Cracked. Watch this video. Um, oh, you at home or you and Holman are on the chat are probably not going to get this. It's okay. I'm sure if you wanted to look up Vogue, Vogue DS, you can find it. I think it's just VOG, isn't it? No, it's VOG. Okay, VOG. Okay. All right, <laughs> Vodge. VAG. <laughs> nice Vodge. Vodge. Do you guys remember? You remember five weeks ago when I guys when I explained to you in great detail how to crack the Chinese code, and I explained to you that 65 percent of the bikes that you were like, oh, that's pretty cool, were Lan Chin. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. In China, there's like five different legit heavy hitters and don't ever talk down about Lan Chin because they have more money than you because sleepy would be upset I to learn just about anybody has more money than, <laughs> than, yeah. than me uh, or Sleep- anybody here sleepy's BMW would be right. sad if you talked bad about Lan Chin well 800 cc's and 90 for her right, I don't give a fuck right no no your BMW would be upset about it 120 mile an hour top speed that's okay right but but my favorite thing about this is usually when we're talking about all the Benellis and all the different stuff that's out there, one of the problems that China hasn't been able to crack is uh, the type of metal they're refining, which is called Chinesium. Mm. And Chinesium is heavier than steel. Chinesium is heavier than, heavier than mild steel. It's heavier than chromoly steel. Chinesium is heavy fucking steel. And when Pete and I went to... Uh, one of the years ago, the Indy, uh, Indianapolis, you know, uh, motorcycle dealer things. He- Me and Pete Hempfling walked around this bike and we were like, this thing looks fucking amazing. And I was like, yeah, it really does. It's, I'm having a hard time accepting that this is from China. It's bothering me that this bike is made in China because it looks really good. And it was an adventure bike with 800 cc's. And this was five or six years ago when it was literally just a buck. You know, it was a thing to get people in, excited and to make not the general public, but to make dealers open their wallet for a Chinese made 800 CC parallel twin adventure bike. And so Hempfling and I are just crawling all over this thing because the people in the booth were not English speaking people. They were all Chinese sex robots. And that's all they did. They just wore skirts and stood around the bike suggestively. And they never leave booths. No, Even when they don't nobody eat. There, they're, they're just they're not, They can live on 800 calories a day. It's they're not They're sad. not allowed to. No, they just give you a handful of white rice and you throw it at them. I just wondered if they had like some kind of a collar. You know, <laughs> like collar. Collar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Invisible feel, fencing. Yeah. <laughs> they never left the booth. Yeah. No, it's But creepy. they also didn't have a problem when Pete and I fondled the bike. Like usually when I fondle a, a bike that's a prototype bike, people yell at me and tell well, me to go back and not take pictures. And right, right. Yeah, yeah right. Third base. And, <laughs> and, and they were like, I got do not, standards. Do not fist and or girls. Right. So Pete and I were getting up close and personal with this thing. And I was like, these welds, these welds are actually really tidy. Wow. They must be 14 years old. Well, the robots are no, brand the welders. new. The robots are brand new. They call the, they call the 14 year olds robots? No. We are used to seeing robots. We're used to India. seeing welding right. by Chinese children. Right. By Indian children. Well, they never make it to 14. But this particular motorcycle that Pete and I were looking at was clearly robot welded. Ah. Somebody had just stacked dimes up on this bike. Oh, they robocop the 14-year-olds. Okay. <laughs> Tom, they out-fucking spent you, buddy. <laughs> they outspent you. It turns out that if you get enough Western people to give Chinese people money, they yep. will invest some of that money in goddamn robots that know how to fucking weld. And lets the 14-year-olds move on to other more important tasks like Sending Tom porn. Building houses? So, no. <laughs> the the dreg, dreg construction, it's fine. No. Tofu dreg is fine. It's part of the world. But here we are. Tom and I were rather impressed by this. Pete. And Pete. I'm sorry, Pete, thank you. Pete I'm and I were impressed. rather impressed by this. And then we found other components on the vehicle that were not so impressive. Right. And that's where we started to go, wait a second. 
China might be just doing a thing that we did years ago, which was you're building a bike out of boxes, a component level machine. And you're, you're going to get some things that your robots are going to build. The frames are going to be really tidy. And what we thought was funny was we just noticed an inconsistency of the quality between some pretty vital components. Chocolate <clears throat> camshafts and candy cane connecting rods. Actually, I believe General Motors called it Cadillac. I think, I think <laughs> that, I think that what shocked us was the frame that the motor was hanging from. The welding was amazing. When we looked at the subframe, though, the welding was explosive. The welding was 4th of July. <laughs> it was stick. It was right. explosive stick. It was no shielding gas. Dude, I told you I was at right? a dealership and saw a $65,000 side-by-side, mm. and the front suspension arms had welding rods sticking out of they them. They literally were oh, sticking yeah. out of yeah. them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So wow. that was where Pete had identified. Pete was like, dude, look over here at this. Look over here at that. Pete's a very good QC guy because Pete is always looking for where you save the money, right? He's always looking for like the angle on like, oh, you could tell they saved a buck over here. You could tell they but saved a buck over there. He all of his military and like firefighting yeah. training to his savings. He does. Like well, it's militant. <laughs> he, it works for him though, yeah, right? right? 100%. It does. You can't argue with the output. The output's no. amazing, right? So going back to this Vogue, um, we've seen some Vogues in person at some various different motorcycle shows and stuff like that. And it does look like Vogue has showed up to play. Uh, Vogue is not screwing around with this particular bike. Now, the hardest thing that we're going to see in the United States is going to be developing a dealer network. Because I don't care what brand you are, whether you're Janus or whether you're Harley Davidson or whatever, the strength of your dealer network will directly affect your sales. It will definitely make your customer feel at peace with their purchase if they feel like they can get a part for it. If they feel like they can get a support item for the, the unit, keep it on the road if they need to. When you spend a second, go to ADV Rider, look up Vogue, V-O-G-E. This piece of equipment is not garbage. This is not tofu well, dread. Well, that's like, so yeah. there's another dude on there, the Cove ones that came yep. in. So they have the Cove 450 and the yep. other ones. The guys are finding that they're halfway decent, but I'm finding it's interesting. Like there's some dealers that are ha taking them, yep. but kind of like with them and a couple other ones, as long as there's like a main <clears throat> dealer that'll ship it. But then all these guys have forums where like this dude's day job is just monitoring those forums right. and telling people, oh, you need parts or whatever. It's almost like their service department is part of a forum. Well, that's yes. that actually. Yeah. yeah. No, we you know it's crazy. When we were doing Red Streak and Fly Scooter. That was a lot of the really early thing was getting in on the like I, my old original boss was created a forum is the best way to say it, because he was essentially the parts manager for the United States of America for fly scooter. And so he, anything that came through, he would be like, no, no, you need to order this part. You need to do this. The, and like he was service managing. That's what I said from this forum. And everybody was like, who are you? And I'm like, well, I'm a 10% investor in fly scooter. But the reality is you're talking about Vogue. Kiss my ring. I am a 10% investor well, in the company. That's, that's <laughs> fair. I've got a Yelp account. You better take care of me. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. They were having a conversation about CF Moto in the chat. Uh... It's okay. They're going to have a conversation about CF Moto forever. Uh, it's a hot topic. Go ahead, Chris. So you were uh, talking about setting up a dealer network. Mm -hmm. And do you ever foresee uh, dealer networks not necessarily being there, but using a vehicle like um, Amazon to sell the unit and then suggest that people go somewhere to get the right. That's, the pieces part. Yeah. I know mm. that might be a long time in the future, but... It's actually not. A I couple of guys have tried it. Actually, Chris is not wrong. Right. No, a couple of guys Can have tried it. Can you say that again? You're not... <laughs> hey, Chris, Chris, get your phone out. Get your phone out. It I is want not, you to record the words I'm wrong. about to say. You are not wrong. Uh, yeah. The, the, the long and short of that is that a number of different companies that we've worked with in the past, back at different generations of the internet, uh, a couple of companies were selling straight on eBay. And then part of them selling straight on eBay was saying, and for all your service needs, go to Cleveland Moto. Yep. Yeah. Right. And then we were sitting there going, wait a second, you are shipping people a bike in a box. 
and telling everybody that we are going to support it. Yeah. Uh, Who the fuck are you? Oh, we're the guys that are going to give you a finder's fee or we're going to give you the spiff. And I promise you that when, when I knew the emperor had no clothes in each of these situations, and a couple of them were low profile, profile, a couple of them were high profile. But when I knew that it was fail was when they were like, it's okay. <clears throat> we're going to use our name. I'm sorry. We're going to use your name for your company on our fly by night website where we sell bikes at flea markets and on eBay and on, you know, direct to merchant marketing. We have bikes at Costco. <clears throat> we have bikes at Sam's club and you're going to be the official point of contact. Well, that's great. At what point does my beak get wet? Yeah. You have got no skin in the game at that point. Yep. Oh, when they come in for warranty work. <laughs> oh, that's great. My <laughs> shop rate is 120 bucks an hour. It's okay. We pay out 45. Um. <laughs> Again. With what? With your hat? I oh, hope yeah. your hat is comfortable. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> because this was a thing that was happening in the United States when the Chinese boom happened. When guys were showing up from China and saying, sell our bike. Go ahead, Chris. But, so think about that. Yeah. They say, we pay 45 bucks an hour. You say yep. you're, you're at 120. Yep. <clears throat> it would be so much smarter for them to say, we will pay you 120 or we'll pay you 125. Oh, oh, Tom, Tom, wait a minute. Wait. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm absolutely we'll, with we'll, you. We'll pay you the premium because we are not investing in an extensive dealer network and all the costs that goes along with that. We're just paying an extra 60 bucks an hour. Fuck. I mean, that's, that, that's, that's smart to do right now. So hang on, Chris. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to answer that real quick. And I'm going to look at Adam real you're, quick and you're say gonna the retort. words. You're going to retort. Correct. I'm going to retort. Hey, hey, Adam. Yes. I'm going to say two words and you're going to go, oh, God. Book rate. Yeah, I was just going to say that not only will they pay you $45 an hour, they're going to pay you two hours for the six hour job you just did. That's exactly right. <laughs> Book exactly rate is right. the most horrific thing you can tell a mechanic. It's, a, it's the most but, cutthroat thing there is. Yep. Okay. However, the people that need to pay it who don't have a service... Uh, uh, coverage in yeah. the United States don't have a choice. No. So ultimately, it's going to be cheaper for the units that break to pay what the what what your local dealer is going to charge you, just so that you can keep things moving forward, rather than saying, "Well, may I'm going to cut off my nose to spite my face." May I comment on that? <laughs> yes, sir. Yep. I think what they're hoping is that people will just get fucked. Yeah. Yep. That they're going to sell these bikes and run away and say, "Yeah, that that guy will fix it for you." Mm -hmm. And then they'll be like, oh, okay, so I'll buy the bike because there's a there's somebody who'll fix it. Yeah. Right. And then when they come to Unky Phil, yep. and Phil says, I, they say they'll pay 45 but I charge 125 and that's what I'm getting. So, right. you know, they'll give me $45, you are going to pay the rest. Right. And they're like, we're fucked. Well, well and that's, yeah, and that's then, the other option. And then, you know, and then you'll be lucky to even get the 45 out of them because by the time yeah, that's the they problem. sell the bikes and the bikes break and they come to you and then you try to file a warranty oh, yeah. claim and then they don't. Send you a check, you know. Yeah, like, I'm surprised they said no. I thought they'd be like 120. We'll give you 150, but I pal. Get, I just get let your, me put it out there. We'll give you 160 because we know you're going to do a great job. And then the first <laughs> one that comes in, they're already fucking gone. I, man. I get like, your point. They could do the right thing and say, "Yeah, we'll we'll pay to have these bikes serviced, and we'll keep selling a lot of them." And and they'll do the right thing because of their long term plan, right? Which is to keep this going for not just 10 months, right. but maybe 10 years. And to yeah, but you're thinking of guys that actually want to sell motorcycles. Some of these guys were selling vape cartridges oh, like yeah. six weeks before that, and <laughs> golf carts. I mean, and I mean most what? most I carve those out of the discussion. <laughs> most most Chinese scooters we saw over the past twenty years basically were six month plans. They were two yeah. two cargo containers some asshole bought in fucking Linhai or Zenan or somebody else or Bashan, and they brought them over and they sold a bunch of them, and then suddenly they realized. They're kind of crap. Dude, you, I, when I had Rider for Life and we would go to all the, the the super bike races and we'd be selling our fucking stunt bike shit and everything like that, you would see these fucking guys just show up and it would be like two or three races out of the 10 races and they'd have like the, the two-wheeled Harleys. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like oh, the yeah. back, like the... It looked like... Somebody took their fucking weed whacker and stuck it in a fucking like yeah. Kmart bicycle. It was terrible, right? 
But like they'd be there and they'd 1200 bucks. These dudes would be taking them home in boxes oh, yeah. and so, fucking everything. And then gone. I'll help you. I'll help you with that. Never see those motherfuckers <laughs> again, man. I'll help you with that. It was called a kicker 5150. Oh, the kicker. I remember that. That was bike. it. That was yep. it. Yeah. They had the, they had the eight ball uh, suicide shifter and everything. Yeah. Tell me all about something. I sold exactly. 160 of Tom. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll listen. I yeah. remember those. Just, those. just, just educate me about something I made. Oh, no. $150,000 selling. Um, <laughs> because I'm, I'm listening. Oh yeah. Um, oh no, they were great. I'm just saying those dudes would show up and then be gone and you'd never see them again two yep. weeks later. And then there'd be a new dude there that would have a different version of it. And then they would be there for a month, a week or two and then gone. Hey sleepy. How would you feel if they put on their national website that you were the only service provider in a 975 mile radius? <laughs> oh, I'm sure it was amazing. Right. And that's all at the expense of your business name at that point. Yeah. Because and they're not going to remember who sold the bike to them. No, they're they're going to remember that mad. Cleveland Moto screwed them for not fixing the thing. So it, a, a bike that you could order online for $1,650. Mm-hmm. And every single person that says, oh, man, my back wheel came off at 65 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. Ow. Well, well, you need to go to Cleveland Moto. Oh, first well, the hospital. Cleveland Clinic first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you need, you need, what is it? Uh, what's the guys up here? Um, we'll make them pay. Yeah, to that, Misney. That, that guy, Misney. Misney. You need to I honestly, <laughs> that would have been the best thing I ever could have done. Uh, that would have been the best thing. Cleveland Clinic. Because living in New Orleans, like, like Morris Bart, you need to call Morris Bart. But the, Misney is up here. All of these bikes that were legitimate, Tofu dreg Chinese awfulness yep. that was just, <clears throat> we discussed this. I know you've heard me say it before. I was going to contact one of these discrupulous fucking manufacturers. What was that word? Discrupulous. <laughs> discrupulous. You yeah. know, look it up. <clears throat> it's it's in the Unky Phil's dictionary. The, uh, I was going to call one of these guys who had quoted me out $699 to build a 125cc scooter. And I said, that's a great idea. How many need to do, how, how many must I buy? They said, I'm container, 84 bikes. My cost, $295 per bike. Drum brakes, carburation, 125 cc's, and they would make the badges for me to say, caveat emptor 125. Nice. Caveat emptor. <laughs> it's very Latin. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very European. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just wanted to do it because at the time I was being sued by mm. a company called Wildfire for some videos I ran. Oh I, yeah. And I was running some public advisory videos warning you not to buy Chinese made garbage. Your jeans were fucking amazing yeah. too, by the way. <laughs> So, <laughs> my jeans were amazing. <laughs> you you had the fucking Canadian tuxedo <laughs> bottom half rolling, baby. It was good. So, <laughs> the long and short of it is, I was going to do it. And I was really going to do it. I was going to do it just to prove a point. I was going to do it to show up to Jamie's Flea Market with a container load of bikes that I was going to sell at $699 for the Caveat Emptor 125 that had, instead of a CVT transmission, chain drive. That had, instead of disc brakes, drum brakes. That was truly the lowest grade bike they would build. Sounds like a throwback bike. It sure does, doesn't it? And, <laughs> and by calling it the Caveat Emptor 125, anybody who tried to take me to court would have to go before a judge and say, Your Honor... The I man bought, ripped me off. I bought this cabinet. I gave him a bike for, I, I gave him $699 <laughs> and bought a motorcycle called the Caveat Emptor 125. <laughs> and it was less than I expected. Dismissed. And the judge and everybody in the courtroom that had a higher than seventh grade education would have a good solid laugh. And he'd look at me with a smile and it'd be like a Mentos ad. He'd be like, ding. And I did. So my one of my biggest mistakes as a young businessman was signing a contract with these fuckers. And these fuckers will sell you a Harley Davidson, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's a Chinese motor 
in everything from the size of a weed whacker, not joking, 35 cc's, up to this particular piece of shit. Um, <laughs> and at no point ever, the hard knock, um, the hard knock 5150. The kicker fifty one fifty. It's crazy, man. Oh, it's the it's the code for criminally insane in That's the Los Angeles saying. Police Department. Yeah. If you ask Sammy Hagar, so this is a great example of what I thought was you know better to piss you know better to be out of the tent pissing in than in the tent pissing out or whatever. Like <laughs> I really did think that this was going to be my answer for every hillbilly that walked into my shop and said. Well, if you only sold one of these. Now, I'm going to let you know that that's a lay down leaf on horse shit motor yeah. made out of Chinesium. Um, with you know, at mid Ohio, that would be a fucking amazing bike, though. Everybody would be like, let me try your bike. Come on, deal. Let me ride your bike. Yeah. So, well, I did that. I spoke that language. Oh, so yeah. I spoke that language for a little while. And I did that and I sold these things. And uh, they, if you want to call them boomerangs, that's the most fucking polite term I've ever heard for this. The good news is a solid 50% of the people that bought them were injured or went to jail prior to them having any sort of a complaint about the vehicle. That's good. 50%. I'd say that's pretty fucking solid. Uh, it's only... It's only second in line to the way we got burned by Cleveland Cycle Works. Oh. In which case, the manufacturer. The land. Not the land. No. This no, is no, pre-land. No, no. no, that's what I'm saying. Now that now Look, the land. Same dirt bag. Right. Different vacuum cleaner. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, they went for a leaf blower. Now it's a vacuum cleaner. Right. Well, they Because it was electric. Now it's electric. Well, they right? Same dirt bag, different Swiffer. Yeah. Whatever. Right. They certainly do suck is they what you're looking for here. They suck. Long and short of it is very simple. When the manufacturer who you're buying bikes from answers the, the cries of the customer whose bikes have failed by saying that you, the guy who sold them, didn't build them correctly. Show up, stand up, defend your product or suffer silently while I punch you about the general cranial area. Yeah, right. right yeah. Right. That's it. So be careful about this kind of stuff. Um, be careful about it. It, it. There is a thing in the world that says, when the customer says, well, I guess they couldn't sell if it wasn't safe. That's not printed anywhere. Underwriters Laboratory still exists, but nobody wants to pay them to review their products anymore. See, you know what else sucks, though? Yeah. Is that the thing is actually cool as fuck. No. No, it's no, not. No, I'm not saying it like the, like it the actual unit, but I'm saying the concept of it. Like, a oh, you mini mean you mean the concept of a rigid, one ten cc powered, but like five hundred pound motorcycle. It's fu oh okay. I thought it, that I thought it was can't like get a out of its bike. own goddamn way. No, that's a full size fucking motorcycle. Oh, I, I thought they it was do like, have pit bikes. I'm, Those are thirty five cc's. Oh, and they're rigid at both ends. These are about, when he says full size bike, these are about the size of a Rebel 250, yeah, give or take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and okay. they're literally they powered by tiny, a tiny, tiny. No, 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 no. No, we have those two. Yeah. You only have to drive them as far as Smedley's. And then. <laughs> 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 um, no, you know, there's some. We dude. sold several of them to people who had them over their bars. And I really love those guys. Those guys that bought the little tiny ones that put them over their bars. It was good. It was cute. It was like, oh, look at that. There's a chopper above yeah. the bar. That's really adorable. They, they do right. look, I'm not going to lie. They do look really cool, but they are, made, they are made of, ab well, no, I mean, if you're looking for this, for like a, look, it'd be perfect. like if you looked at a portrait, if you looked at a portrait on your wall of the Mona Lisa. Right. And you're like, okay, Mona Lisa is great. Stop. Let me take the Mona Lisa away. I'm going to take the lady out of the picture and I'm going to put Pepe the frog in there. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to hang it back up again. Right. Is it still beautiful? Well, everything's the same except for the Pepe the Frog face in the middle. Right. Now, if you can get past the Pepe the Frog face in the middle, it's probably still a great piece of art. Yeah. The problem with this is every time I look at one of these things, all I see is where the motor used to be. <laughs> right. All I see is the empty space where my money's supposed to go. All I see is the empty space where my pride used to be. All I see is the empty space yeah. that's full of air where my dignity was. It's like a I chopper was thinking navi. of this it's as a, like a... Yes, it I is a chopper so, navi. I was oh thinking God. of this like a fucking oh, pit bike from uh, mid-Ohio. I didn't realize no, this was like no, a fucking they're, motorcycle. They're pretty, they're pretty big. This is all about you pulling up in front 
front of Smedley's and being like, hey, guys, I got a motorbike, too. Okay. Yeah, Look at I, me. I got a rigid. That went right over my right. head. I you thought do these have a things were like little fucking yeah. mini pit bike things. And yeah, I was like, well, that's pretty no, cool. It's, it literally, they literally are. It has blue the, rims. They literally yeah. are about the size of a Rebel 250. It's, they're, this a, is, they're a big-ish bike. This is the big dog Urkel. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. All right. Wow. Okay. And how much did it cost? Uh, they were between two and four grand. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Honda monkey. Exactly. Money. Show up on a fucking yeah. monkey. That's yeah. Dax it, money now. Fucking either. monkey. You just show up on your fucking monkey. That's all I, you know, that's all you need to do. All right. Dax is our Can hidden. anybody say supercharger? Oh, sorry. Supercharger. Supercharger. Now, what if we made the supercharger its own goddamn motor? Now, the only way to power a supercharger is right off the crank. Oh, my God, John. I think you'd be wrong. What? <laughs> what? Wait. Yo, yo. Honda. Honda. You're Honda. clearly mistaken, on, sir. Well, what are they doing? They, they're going to run it with hydraulics? Hey, no, they're going to run it with electricity. Yeah, How much power go. is that going to take to run a supercharger? About How much power volts. does it take to run a leaf blower? 1.21 gigawatts. So much power that, gigawatts. that the bike will have to have two batteries. Not one, but two batteries. It's a good thing batteries are hard to find and unobtainium. Oh, wait, no, they're cheap and plentiful? So that would be really cool putting oh an electric supercharger on a inline four-cylinder. I don't know it, why we haven't done that before. There should be plenty of room where that fourth cylinder should be. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Nobody ever said, check out my new V3. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you had the NSR 400 two-stroke. Okay. Fair, oh, fair enough. Right. Um, years ago, I watched a video. Um, not that many years ago, obviously. Um, I watched a, a video of somebody feeding a motor using a leaf blower. Dude, you can't be making fun of this bike. This bike, literally, I got an erection. Literally. I was like, literally. Sitting, I did. I was in my, yeah. Literally. Too bad you didn't let your wife see it. Well, yeah, you know, All right. But I'm saying the, like, this, this is amazing. Side. This motor. <laughs> oh my God. This motor is beautiful. So. Years and years and years ago, I watched this silly little throwaway video of some guy going, here is a normal 200cc motor. And here's what happened when I use a leaf blower oh, yeah, yeah. to force feed it air, not nitrous, not ethanol, air, the shit we breathe. And he just literally just grabbed a leaf blower you know, you know, and he just shot it into the intake and that motor went plaid <laughs> for like 17 and a half seconds. And then the piston evacuated and said, fuck off. I'm out. But for a while, it was pretty magical. Yeah. And that motor that normally runs at about 7,000 RPMs got up to something like 26,000 RPM and no gas was added. Yeah. Just high pressure air, what we call induction or non normal aspiration, right? Honda, <laughs> Honda said, eh, you know, superchargers that run on the crankshaft are so Mad Max. And instead they said, well, you know, we sell leaf blowers too. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're I right. wonder, I wonder if they were like, Okay, hey guys, should we make our own leaf blower or should we just fucking bolt a Ryobi to this thing? Well, that's the thing is I think <laughs> I, the the brushless motor technology has yeah. gotten so good now and so reliable and the torque and the power is there because I guarantee you from a lot of those vacuum cleaner companies, you know, they're spinning like 150,000 RPMs on these little tiny fucking motors. It's insane. Wouldn't we all be happier if this said Kirby on the side and it was made in Cleveland? Yeah, that'd be kind of neat. I feel pretty good about it. <laughs> yeah, I'd be, cool. be pretty cool if that if that turbo, a, aka supercharger, because it's happening before, um, if that supercharger said Kirby on the side and it was made in Cleveland, it'd run for forty years. It would run for forty years, and you could use it to paint your car. But you know what's <laughs> fucked up though? It's, right now, there's yeah. some engineer from Wish yes. that's like, God damn it, we've been selling this thing for four fucking years. <laughs> <laughs> Bolt on supercharger. Yeah. $35. Yeah. $35. That's all 12 you need. 12-volt ignition. It, it, it literally right in. plugs into your cigarette outlet. No, no, no. You just have to take a one, like the unused fuse out, and it plugs right yes, into your it just goes right into that. <laughs> <sighs> what kind of stator is this thing going to have to have? I don't even know. Honestly, it's... It says it's, that it'll have an upgraded electrical system. Yeah, it must. It'll it'll have have all the Suzuki's stator. not making it. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> Suzuki's. No, no, no. These are not. Yeah, there's. Hey, hey, just get the one off the Hayabusa. It'll be fine. Yeah, no, it won't. Look at the wings on Suzuki. They really, wow, they're going with the new. Tra- oh, no, those are resistors. <laughs> Did that comment come out cooling. from underneath the hat? <laughs> <laughs> the. Uh, I lo- there is one particular line in here that I'm pretty happy about. Uh, Honda remained tight lipped about specifics. No shit. With no displacement or power figures available. But MCN were able to sit down. And by the way, spelling error. Always question journalism that has a spelling error. When they mean to say MCN were able to sit down and they wrote were able to sit down, question, question the source material. Uh, with the company's Italian communications director, Constantino Paolacci. Yeah. Okay. Nobody does communications like an Italian. Like an Italian. <laughs> that name is fucking amazing, dude. Right. How'd you say that? That was really good. I'm good at that. Constantino Paolacci. 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 Okay. You walked into my shop today. Yeah. And he, Steve has no idea how much Italian we speak at the shop dude. just to survive. But because no, but it was. Every new- time Vespa drops a new item on us, it's like working at Ikea. You're going to learn some Swedish. It's just a fact. But if you, you want to have a meatball, you're going to have to learn to order it. But you've rolled into it like it was like, like you were like Spanish people that learned English and then you're mixing the two together because like you were like, all right, hey, uh, blah, blah, blah. So the guy's going to need a, and then you just started going, uh, vente double chino fucking rocket. And she's like, okay, va. And she's answering. And then I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Now everybody's speaking. <laughs> Molto <Italian>. dopo <laughs> extra grande. Yeah. Molto bene. Molto dopo extra grande. It's three languages. Hang in there. We do that at the shop all the time. Oh, yeah. If I can mix my languages in one sentence, it's my favorite thing right. in the world. But of I mean, course, to Renee's credit, she just picked, it wasn't even a missed beat. She's been it dealing with a, dude, it dude. Was, it wasn't even a fucking pause in operation. Dude, sleepy. It was just like, but did it? Sleepy, like, sleepy. I came out of the back and they are speaking their own special language. We have that too. Not yeah, going to yeah. lie. Like they come back and check on me to make sure I have food and water and not passed out on the floor and shit because I've inhaled. <laughs> if it cleaner. gets real quiet, we check him once right, in a while. Right. Right. They come back and throw food at me. It's fine. <laughs> Some dude but robs you guys. Forward. You guys both just fly through the air sideways flipping guns oh, yeah, no, each it's other. Okay. There. Yeah. But like like I go up front every now and again and they are having this in-depth conversation in like some weird squirrel language back and forth. And I'm I like I will literally just come in and drop bombs and rock and walk out. It's <laughs> impressive. Man. We it have really invented is. our own secondary language. Right. Gorlami. No, it's Buzz. Gorlami. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's hysterical. It's they, not a hard language they, to crack. It's, it's, well, it's no more complicated like, than Pig Latin. Like, it's just like, faster. Like, like That's they all. Will just, they will yeah. just, like, I'm in the back doing work, and they're up, yeah. up front fucking off. And, like, yeah. just, just talking about, off. like, the housing market right. or, like, space exactly like, yeah. cohabitating in Mars. That's I'm my like, job, man. What the shit? That's my job. <laughs> I will come up, get my food, and go. <laughs> I'm going back. I'm going away. <laughs> I'm going away. This is an odd space to be. Meanwhile, they're that's both a, like, is he gone? Okay. All right. That's now, what exactly were we actually what talking, talking, about. talking about? <laughs> well, that's when we put, that's when we put our human suits back on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, like, what the hell? <laughs> okay. Did anyone else pick up in this particular article about NCN, about this goddamn Honda, about the first model will likely be a Roadster? Hmm. No. Okay. Well, you all need to pay attention. Well, that's obvious enough yeah, for the what American defines market. a roadster? That's no, Unky Phil loves himself a roadster. Wait, like, what defines a roadster? Yamaha XS650 circa 1973. Mm, all right. Okay. Now we're talking. V9 Roamer. Now we're talking. Yes, V9 Roamer. Stelvio. Right. Mm. No, more Gre- of an adventure bike. Greaso, not the Greaso. Greaso, the Greaso definitely okay. a Greaso. All right. Definitely I get, I get, a Greaso. Yeah, yeah, the muscle bike, the VMAX. The VMAX a good one. 850 Commando. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Age 50 But that's the thing is because we MTO MT, MT, oh, MT, 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 or L1. What was the fucking ridiculously fast, muscly looking? Oh, the MTO1? Yeah, is that right? Yeah. We didn't get it here. Yeah. We didn't get it here. Yeah. But oh. that's a, that's the thing. A muscle yeah. bike. We call it a muscle bike. Don't do not do that. Liza did that last week and she or, fucking got herself right in a corner. Call it a muscle Tell bike? She, she basically oh, yeah, tried gotcha. to figure out the, the Misfits podcast. Man, I love those guys. To no end. Legitimately love those guys to no end. But Emma was like, well, in order for us to talk about muscle bikes, we need to go back to the 1923 Herkimer. Ah. And, and and I get it. I totally, I totally get it. I, I love it. It makes Zandu. perfect sense. 
But if you say the word muscle bike and you do not immediately say the word Kawasaki ZL900 Eliminator. Oh, yeah. ZL. Yeah. You didn't understand the assignment. The VX800. Again, just say ZL900 Eliminator. <laughs> I, I know that's earlier, but I mean, another one that just slaps you in the head is VMAX. Like, well, so yeah. That's where they ended up. They yeah, ended yeah. up yeah. saying, they ended up being like, they spent well, two hours to say VMAX V-Rod. VMAX V-Rod. Right. Again, v- V-Rod. Again, they called one the VMAX. They called one the V-Rod. Huh. You didn't need to spend two hours. Right. <laughs> it was in the marketing notes. Okay. You know what? But what you should have said Did was have- ZL900 Eliminator. Close the book. Fucking walk Did- away. Oh. And when, if it does not emulate this motorcycle... It is not a power cruiser. It is not a hot rod. Did Our, they have a did, did they have a top ten of power cruisers? Uh, <laughs> Johnny Chrome came up with a name for those type of Jesse James bikes and Orange County Chopper oh, bikes yeah. and all that weird shit that we're like we couldn't understand. And I think Johnny Chrome was calling them Pro Street. Yeah, like he's like those are proof street bikes, well, the no, big pro, dogs pro and all that horse shit. Did you see how the investments are going on those? I posted a video of three of them going up on Meekum, like zero miles, kept in crates, babied to their whole lives, uh, blah blah blah, whatever. One of a kind, Start, hand built, yeah, right, thirty six yeah, yeah. inch front I'm wheel, starting at nine thousand dollars. Do I hear nine? Th- nine? No, nine? No I'm nines? Sorry. I'm sorry. Nine? Insert sound of crickets here. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, uh, if well, I that one will be available there. And they rolled the next one up. All right, this one, <laughs> handmade, da, 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 whatever it is. Do I hear $8,000? Third one, $7,000. The sound of people furiously not bidding. Yeah. Yeah. And this rolled if, them away, and if, I was like, oh. If, if I could have a pit bull or a mastiff for, like, like as a, as a, like a tertiary bike. Tom, what's your budget? 3000 There you go. Right. You All right. So... <laughs> When we are talking about that and Meekum or any of the hype, the rule is be the only one of what you are. Mm. Be the comedy relief. <laughs> right? Yeah, to you know, you're right. Be the comedy relief. That does explain Big Dog. <laughs> when the guy rolls the 57 Chevy Bel Air across the stage at Meekum, and you know that he spent $10,000 on the fucking upholstery. If you show up with your ten thousand dollar big dog, I'm sorry, ninety nine ninety nine big dog, you got a chance in hell mm-hmm. because you're less than the seats in that bitch, and you can th- then wealthy assholes can buy it on a giggle between cigars. <laughs> okay, true. That'll be up above their bar. Yeah, and it'll be hanging oh, yeah. in their fucking pole barn in their garage mahal. Yep. Right. Hey, you know what? Every thirty nine days, it leaks one drop of oil. Right. Because that is truly in the margins for them. Okay, good. But there can be one of those. If your dumbass brought three of them to meek them, you are triple <laughs> stupid. Because now you're going to be shamed not once, not twice, but the coup de gras. Well, but here's the thing, too. In that period of choppers, yeah. like you had so many big names attached oh, to yeah. them that a lot of people, even if the style, of the, the bike is gone, they're like, oh, I still like that guy, so I'll buy it. But these You know things what? My like, dick really gets hard for the Carolina Siding Company West Coast Chopper. That, well, that's like, that's my point. But like, but like, like some of these, like, like just the general big dog, like yeah. not even like, like, oh, this one is attached to like, well, you have to admit, like somebody that well, like a 49ers bike, some dude's probably like jerking himself off to be like, oh, I got the 49ers yeah, bike. You got whatever, the right? one. Yeah. Right. But I'm saying like, if you just own like fucking like, yeah. you know, that it used to be $29,000 yellow big dog. Oh, no, no, no. That motherfucker's got to be worth like $200 now. If you buy. Bought, if you bought a board get. Oh, my, my ex boss did from the fucking recording studio, Steve Gay. There you go. I wonder, he had two of them fuckers. I wonder if there's anybody in the room right now who was the <laughs> official <laughs> service provider oh, for Sucker Punch Sally. Oh. 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 I forgot they existed. Right. Yeah. And that's uh, a name I haven't heard in a I while. I didn't. Because yeah. I, I cashed those checks. <laughs> Dude, all I know is that that board get it was the Python. It was thirteen oh, yeah. feet long. It was a eighty five thousand dollar chopper, and he was scared to ride it, so he asked me to take it. So at so at the time, I I was doing Rider for Life, so I had my fuck chopper shirt on, <laughs> riding this fucking giant thing, right? And I was gone two seventy one going down to Quaker Steak to get down to like bike night, you know? And I hit a fucking freeway expansion joint, 
and the thing flexed and like pancaked down. Yep. Because it had a front suspension, but it did not have the no to rear suspension. Also, no air ride. And you know, so, it just had a 300 series back tire that you're yep. supposed to only inflate to 14 psi. Okay, Correct. well, I, none of that was told. I was just riding. <laughs> And so when it uncompressed, what are you fucking new here? Yeah, well, I was on that. And when it uncompressed, all of a sudden my ass was three and a half feet yeah. above the seat. Yep. And I was like holding on to a dirt bike. Basically. Don't you understand pneumatics, dude? Those Chris, things. What are tires? Hoops of air. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Tom, have you been reading the comments? I haven't heard a comment in a very I, long time. The last one literally. I believe is, Tom. I believe Tom forgot his mission. The, no, the literally the last one is Dan. Literally. Because we were, Leah, yeah, it, it, it is. Dan's commenting? Dan, Dan Crompy, who okay. is Adam's in Dan's seat. Sorry, Dan. Asking, <laughs> asking whether or not Sleepy is a higher level mechanic. Oh, yeah, he's a higher level every goddamn he thing. Is, he is higher. <laughs> when he, he is, came into my shop higher. today, Mecklefresh would say he was higher than now, giraffe pussy. Before that, before that, <laughs> I had free, a stressful now, day. Now, before that, Freeway's Garage Who's did that? indeed ask... Uh, Patreon question: right. What's the opinion on the Royal Alloy 150 and 300 after a while has passed? How yes. Do, how do they hold up? Good, Tom. So, how do you feel about the coolant in the Royal Alloy 300? All right, we talked about this a couple of podcasts Very ago. Very simple. The, Make it quick. If you have a Royal Answer the Alloy, man's question. if you have a Royal Alloy 300, yep. change the uh, radiator fluid immediately. Yep. Coolant immediately because that shit is like fucking Kool Aid. Mm -hmm. They will dye your shit blue. Um, it is a knockoff GTS 300 motor, which we all know is bulletproof. It is a pattern pattern build licensed. Yep. By Zong Shen. Yep. Who does have the blessing of the Holy offer, yep. the Holy uh, Vatican in Italy to produce the bike. Yep. And I will tell you that once Tom changed all the coolant to be the same flavor, Oh, and gosh. exercised all the bubbles out of the system. Yep, yep. That son of a bitch would not overheat at 85 yep. miles no, per I, hour. I, I unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever yeah. we're going to look at it, made a Royal Alloy 300 kind of bulletproof. Not gonna, not gonna attempt. Yeah, well, wait. Wait, hold on, dude. I wasn't gonna go that far. No, no. <laughs> my, but, but it literally took me kind of doing some extra work. I will say that Unky Phil with no helmet on ran that bitch down 480 at 84 <laughs> plus indicated, <laughs> and it was just I. Yeah, but do, do you remember I, the day you got the first one? Because I was I was helping I you and we worked and you were like, you started it and goes, oh, it runs. And then you burned off the back tire yeah. <laughs> just to make sure that it was I, a solid you know, fight. It was awesome. I was like, I'm going to sleep. You knows in it. That I, my, no, no. I don't believe in anything until right. You gave it the test. I give oh, it yeah. the beans. You yeah, yeah, the beans. I, you have to I, give it the beans. No, but nobody I'm could ever say that you don't fucking like give it like like you don't just tell like people say oh well, yeah I'll give it to Phil he'll do a burnout on right. the first thing. No, oh, you no. really do no, no. A fucking burnout on the burnout, first start. Really? Okay. Yeah, that's John. John that's has John. been there way too many times. They're like, hey John, we're gonna get this out of the box. Cool. We're gonna put a battery in it. Great. We're gonna put air in the tires. Great. All right. Wheelie show. Lock and roll. Rip it. Rip it. I'm, I am. Sometimes a, we're sober. I am. <laughs> God, when is that? It's that often. Tuesday right. mornings. Tuesday mornings. Um, I am of the opinion that once they are tinkered with a purpose, because, okay, let's, let's start this the right way. Yeah. I'm a Lambretta guy. I love Lambrettas. You, okay. Okay. First of all, let's be honest. If you are talking about the Royal Alloy Motor Scooter yeah. and you say the word Lambretta, you are already pissing off oh, absolutely. everybody who knows what a Lambretta is. Yeah, but if anybody right. knows me, they know I'm going to piss off literally everybody. I understand. So, I understand. so right. I'm, I'm a Lambretta. I've owned TV 175s. Yeah, 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 right. 150s, 125, Series yeah. 2. Ser I have never owned a Series 1. I'm still regretting this. Yeah. Um. I like the concept of the Royal Alloy. Mm -hmm. The GT150 apparently is kind of bulletproof-ish because they're water, they're air cooled, right? Still, yes. The water cooled 300, I love, yep. but I love it after you get it tinkered with the right way. Because, like I said, after you change the coolant in it, it becomes <clears throat> cooler. Yeah, it yeah. becomes everything you want an old Lambretta to be, which yeah. is. Sort of reliable. Unencumbered by a computer key chip. Exactly. It is not the GTS where you have Unencumbered to Unencumbered by traction control. Yep. Nope. It is it is literally the Dodge it, it, the Dodge Charge Challenger. It is like it is it is like you said. 
could we go back five years yeah. and just focus on the motor? Yeah. It's got ground yeah. clearance. It does. Yeah. And, and it's, going for you. the proportions aren't quite right. No, they're not right. But no, no, no. the front motor, the front part of that motor scooter, and the and back part of that motor scooter met in a very dark alley yeah. one and night. I, and I beetle, I <laughs> literally like, beetle that I, thing. I for, like it though, man. Let I me tell like you about it. my wife. She's <laughs> sexy as hell after 17 drinks. I have, I have <laughs> like, after yeah. appropriately beating on that yeah. one for yeah. like a week. Yeah. I kind of hated it, but at the same right, at the end of the day, it ran. I well, felt let's put can, it this way, okay? <laughs> the normal Lambretta owner in Cleveland, Ohio, yeah. is going on, what, four rallies a, yeah, a, right, a right. summer? Oh, yeah, but they're not going on that bike. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. But on the, No, but say, like, if you're going to go on any kind of a rally and think, yeah, that yeah, thing right. will last you for years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, right. I can start literally and run I can and be throw amazing. a wrench in my area and hit four Lambrettas. Easily. And I yeah. still won't take a single one of them. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, if you have an authentic two-stroke four-shift manual shifting Lambretta, I can, I can throw, and you use that to go to work, I know only one thing: you work from home. And I, yeah. <laughs> I, can right? throw, I can throw a wrench and hit at least one of Stoney's bikes. I, I, nobody who listens to this cares about that. I, know, <laughs> I promise you, I know. that is some obscure and shit. They should I don't? But, I, I don't need that. And the reality, knowing what I know, I still would take the Royal Alloy. <laughs> If you want to get to work in the morning <laughs> and you like, and you're a Lambretta fetishist, if you saw the movie, movie Quadrophenia and went, that's my boner fuel, then if you, you know, that's your thing. If you believe in that, you know, we are the mods, we are the mods, we are, we are, we are the mods. If yeah. you believe in that, but you have a job that needs you to get to work in the morning and you don't work from home, then you probably will be happy with a Royal Alloy. Yeah. That's all there is to it. And, and even... Bullshit purist asshole skinhead fuckers, soccer hooligans, what have you. Even they in the UK have said, you know what? There's a lot to be said for not getting fired because I yep. want to ride a 64 Lambretta yep. or an 80 Servetta or a 90 Indian copy or are the same. Or anything it else. Doesn't matter. The the long and short it comes down to, it's a pretty solid goddamn if, bike if you want if you absolutely positively have to have a reliable bike to get you everywhere oh don't every spare the fluid the film by the way no, no don't no. spare the fluid film oh no because they treated that motherfucking bike like paint was priceless yep <laughs> so if you absolutely have to i've be never anywhere. seen less prep i've never seen less prep i've never seen less primer i've never seen less actual paint on a bike they painted that thing at a distance <laughs> dude Scorp my score. I got this scorpion helmet that's yeah. fucking beautiful. It's yeah. carbon, it weighs nothing, right? Yeah. But they, the paint, I was like, oh, this is beautiful. I have to protect it. So I took my eighteen dollar a can from your shop or whatever yeah. Honda polish, yeah. the polish that can't yeah. hurt anything. No, it's seriously, it, it is truly unicorn tears. The greatest. It will hurt nothing in yeah. the world. Right. And that was not even called Honda polish. No. Now it's whatever it's Dixie's shiny ass it's, or it's shine and shine. Yeah. Right, whatever. Right. Spray and shine, whatever. So right. I take yeah. it and I'm like, yeah. okay, cause if you, if you get it on <sighs> something right. when it's fresh, yeah. it really helps from not fucking it up. Right. Dude. It's, it's amazing. So I'm like, yeah. and I take my brand new, brand new, like out of the bag, microfiber. I'm like, and I do it and I rub it and it's like supposed to glisten. I look and it scratched the fuck out of everything. The paint, the paint on that helmet is wef, like less than one micron thin. I, right. I, I can't even believe that it's a human like, ability to Again, paint that thin. You bought a carbon fiber helmet, Sleepy. I know. But then still, you understand that weight is important. I get and paint it, is a heavy motherfucker. Right. But touching it with the car, with the microfiber. Do you know why towel? American Airlines doesn't paint their planes? Wait. That's right. Because the fucking paint costs them efficiency. You know why Mrs. Smith's it's, new car didn't get a uh, gallons of fuel? Yes. Mrs. Smith's new car didn't get a spare tire. <gasps> Wait, are you fucking kidding? No, really? they, no, no her, doesn't have one either. Her her new car came with a uh, a little, little pumper dumper. Uh, you know, one of the things where you inflate the tire. A triple A card. Um, wow. So yeah, because wow. I, I wow. said, where's the fucking spare? Right. Uh, you don't get one, and it didn't even come with a donut. No, no, get a donut. no, it donut, no nothing. With, it, that that it came whole with, back area is empty. Jesus Christ! Did Same it come with, with like an aerosol can of moose, or did it come yeah. with something with a cord on it? Uh, moose. Yeah. Fuck that. Well, oh my uh, you God. know, it's, but what yeah. are they doing? They're trying to reduce weight. And, and probably, how often do you use really yeah. a spare tire? Right. You know, once every five years. In the modern market, I, I will completely agree that it's not often. So yeah, right. Yeah. What I what I did was I grew a spare tire. No, it's a joke. <laughs> 
That's okay. You'll see way, it you in the slid, show notes. You completely slid that one by me, and I appreciate that. Oh, I get it now. You'll, yeah, you'll yeah, see it in the show yeah, notes. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't yeah. picking up what you were putting down there. Ah, no. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I don't think I pay the Spare high tire, enough Patreon. Muffle on top. <laughs> he got a little <laughs> thicker in the middle with a little age going on. <laughs> totally. But he, he wrapped all that eloquently into <laughs> one little fucking line. By the way, that was very right slim, and I appreciate the efficiency. Yeah. You just got to really sit up straighter do. in your seat there. Yes, you do. <laughs> sometimes sometimes bit. Smith's on top of you. Sometimes yeah. he just passed you, man. He's on the next level. Hey, I don't, n- sleepy, sleepy, sleepy. Never say the words. Smith's on top of you. Oh, get or your mind out of the gutter. Settle down, Tommy. Settle, Settle down. down. <laughs> hey, but I did want to say this, and uh, for what it's worth, the the Audi Audi cars have already done this. Yeah. So the idea was that um, the Audi's got not one but two uh, 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 power whistles. Uh, it's got two turbochargers, and while it's waiting for those to spool up, their electric supercharger kicks mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. on the early stage. So they're kind of like anti-lag devices. Fuck yeah, they are. Yeah, right? All right. yeah. All right. But it's Audi. The fails built in. So. So, but that uses a forty-eight volt. Wait, what? System. What brand does Tom approve of? Is there a brand that I, yes? Have yeah. you noticed the two Hondas he's in my a, driveway? He's a giant proponent of Coleman. Yeah, Coleman. <laughs> he's finally found a bike he can't make run. Yeah, yeah. The uh, he respects them for literally having built it perfectly so that he could fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> he could try to overthink that shit. With one piston. I really did. And oh. two valves. Oh, God. I went, to, I went, I went <laughs> way deep. It's this deep. close to being a two-stroke. Yeah. Oh, it is yeah. literally this close <laughs> yeah. to being a two-stroke. Like, I, I like and, ju- and, and, yeah. and he was like, no, fuck you, Phil, buying one for, out of the box for $650. I'm going to buy a broken one. And never ride it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show the you pro- a thing or two. The, the problem is every, every, every time he goes near my bikes, I'm like, tap, step away from the bikes. <laughs> Those both run perfectly. Every, every step couple away. months, every couple of months I go past mine, I go, I should throw more money at that. <laughs> I think it it's, is, only, it's, it's like a, a one it's, cylinder it's like fucking two, side it's like valve. It's a 240, <laughs> like with the CBT, with, yeah. the, mat, with the big uh, clutch. I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna he, tell, hold on. Hey, Sleepy, can you remember the time that either one of my Coleman's didn't start? Yeah. No. No, I can't either. Oh, no. Can you remember any time that somebody had to walk my Coleman's back because it wasn't running? No. no. And you know what? I've only put one tank of gas yeah. in re- each of those. <laughs> Do you remember a guy that put a whole shit ton of fucking money into a mini bike that he bought originally for a really exorbitant price and then made it do all kinds of things and raced it? And now it's gone. It's gone. Because that motherfucker was about to explode at any <laughs> moment. So he's doing all the shit that's right. just going to make it last for yeah. like seven minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to go really to- fast on it for seven minutes. You know minutes. what the best thing about a Coleman is when it comes out of the box? Everything. Yeah, you're done. It's everything. It is idiot proof. <laughs> but yours even has the, the fun wheels, right? Which one? Oh, yeah. No, you, no he's, you, you he's have a, the, the torque converters, converters, right? I have one of each. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Okay. Right. The correct number of $600 disposable bikes <laughs> is two. But the, with Why? the torque converter, them fuckers can get up to some speed, though. That's what I'm talking no, about. No, no, I no, don't no, care. No, if problem, it is if it problem. is exactly one fuck faster than walking. Right. That's all that matters. No, Sleepy, the problem, right. the problem is I started reading stuff and I went, oh, I could do that. And the problem is I went, oh, I could do that. And the problem is, oh, I could do that. And now I'm like, now I'm really, really busy and I can't do all that. Oh, well, you're a couple of weeks from being really cold. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm Winter a, I'm, is coming. No. Yeah. The, uh, that is, that the is problem a deal. Is, no, Sleepy, the problem with winter, the problem with winter at our shop is that Phil has like a thousand bikes. And this is not a joke. I've got sixty six bikes. I just counted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. How many how many bikes do I have to make it work over this winter? Just the three you didn't finish last year. No, hey, Tom. No, 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 no. <laughs> Tom, what do I do for a living every day? <laughs> just right. the four. I do videos. videos. Then what happens at night and weekends? Nothing. I do videos. I do videos. Oh, videos. So shut so your no. pile <laughs> and fix your bike. Like I did. I did finally put the transmission back in the ambassador last there week. There you so. go. <laughs> Hey, so I did want to say this just because we were talking about motorcycles uh, before we decided to just attack people. Um, we. Hey, no, I can't even say that word. Okay. Are you monitoring the chat? Yeah, I'm looking. You don't look like you're monitoring the chat. I am, but All honestly, right. Dan is the last one that's commented. So either my chat has frozen 
or people. I'm are not, seeing all kinds of stuff about here. Is like, what does a container of shitbox scooters cost no, now? I've There's a spec that. racing class. Like I'm, I'm you down. saw that, but I didn't hear that. Well, yeah, but we're not. So doing if you it. saw but, that, but, but I didn't but, hear do that. Do you want the entire Kawasaki conversation? Yeah, too? I want the feed. Yeah, people want to know if they can get CF Moto parts. And somebody who works for CF Moto said, well, okay, it's an entire conversation. Somebody commented on... You're supposed to be reading those things. I know. Is Kawasaki outsourcing? He's fired. Fired. Oh, my God. I was Team John. Team John fell asleep. John fell asleep. (laughs) I fucking can't do anything now with Team That's John. why we like, gave the job to but, Tom. But like the yeah. last thing, the last comment literally was Dan. And I'm like, okay, cool. Is there anybody else commenting? No, I, they old? I think everybody died. No, nobody died. I keep seeing the thing moving up. And every time it moves up I'm and you get, don't say something, I'm I getting, get weird. I'm not getting Are you going to make me do this job too? I'm not getting movement. You're not getting movement. I'm I've got Freeways this. Garage things. So the Royal LA 150 at least it, has link brakes. And when I pull the... Oh. Rear, it applies two pistons on the front. Oh, beautiful. Versus one from the front brake. I got used to it. Is no, it common or is it missed or not? Update. No, actually, the, the, the Royal yeah. Alloy 300 doesn't do that. The Royal Alloy 300 has hey, the hey, traditional... Hey, 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 What? Aaron says something important. Drink every time y'all chastise me. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Look, there's, there is things going on. I just pulled Adam one. jumped in on that shit fast. <laughs> there's right? all kinds of fucking I'm telling you, Tom, get with mine, the program. Mine was not updating. Tom, not, you had one job. And I fucked at it. Well, yeah. then you can sit over here and read this shit. It's I updating know. constantly. Oh, my I must God. Say, there's a whole fucking Every thread. time I see that thing going, you yeah, don't talk. Luke, I know. Uh, ZL900A is what we're talking about. ZL900A? Yeah, jo- Joshua Clark. Yeah. Is that There's an 85 ZL900A... Oh, tell me more about the ZL 900 A. Um, he says they're talking about there's one for sale down the road from it. So Joshua Clark, if you could okay. call in on the bat phone and tell Phil where this thing is, he wants to buy it. Okay. Oh, well, I will give you Calm just, down there, I'll Tom. give you 90 seconds about the ZL 900 Eliminator. I wanted one so hard and they made for a moment, they made a ZL 1000 Eliminator. Oh, yeah. <gasps> I remember the ZL 1000. Shaft drive. Yeah. And yeah, a nice yeah. round number, like a 1000, Dude, right? Dude, shaft drives are fucking... I, that's why I love my uh, my GS850. Yeah. Well, not just one. Yeah. But it's the shaft drives are dope, man. People yeah. can say what they want about them. It's yeah. smooth. I like how the fucking. guy was like, well, you know, you got shaft drive there. You, 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 can't, do, uh, you can't do burnouts. <laughs> oh, says, hey, I'm, I'm fucking sorry. Me and my Moto Guzzi say you're wrong. What you the can, fuck, man? I, you, you could do it in the rain and not even worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing wrong with a shaft drive is do not try to accelerate whilst turning left. Okay, yeah, right. The term is called shaft jacking. <laughs> yes. And if you ever want to find the ditch, that's the easiest way to find the right hand ditch yeah. in a left hand turn. Usually you're shaft jacking when you can't find it. <laughs> 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 now he's getting out on the game. Sometimes yeah. shaft jacking is all you got, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the shaft jacker 900, <laughs> the shaft jacker ZL 1000. Um, I shaft jacked my way into a telephone pole one time on a Super Magna. And uh, I I was winning that race and then I lost the race quite suddenly. And I have I had seven stitches in my back because of that. Ouch. Uh, but the ZL, the ZL 900 and the ZL 1000, I got to say, man, they were not good handling machines, well, but something. my goodness, they did go straight in a hurry. Yeah. And all the VMAXs and all those little things did too. And, <laughs> and, and anything that said the V65 on the side, if you it said what? V65 on the side, fuck it. You better get a life insurance policy. You know what's policy. crazy though? And I don't know how this happened. Yeah. <laughs> but the same dudes... That had the fucking same clothes that had the V-Maxes yeah. now own scat packs. Yes, they do. <laughs> they just graduated. They literally just slid over. <laughs> same clothes, though, man. The same. They didn't change no anything. No sleeves. Sleeves never became part no, of the No, they had the muscle shirts, and the muscles yeah. weren't included. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? These guys, like, I've been like, we're like, dude, that is, a, that is a bespoke Walmart muscle shirt. You didn't cut the sleeves off. It's got a ringer. Like, it's embroidered. John, it is straight up. Oh, who's the... Um, and when dudes buy who's those... Who's the guy with the tigers and the vajazzler? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. what's that guy? Tom Hardy? Yeah, Tom, Tom Hardy. Hardy. No, but if the, John no, was, no, sleeping, I was the actor. He would oh, attest Farm to and this. Fleet. Dude, we got dudes that come into the shop with Farm and Fleet sleeveless t-shirts. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not, they're not like... 
I'm going to cut the sleeves off this bitch because it's slowing me down. They bought it that way. Dude, we walked, when at the end of our trip last year at the Blue Ridge Mountains, We yeah. like after we run the 215, there's like this bar. Those guys get a beer, I get like an NA, and we sit yeah. there and whatever. Right. And so you're in the parking lot, and there's all our bikes, a couple other bikes, and, and then a group of cars. And there's like a Porsche. There's there's like some like, you know, rice cars and some other right. stuff. So we go into this little watering hole, and it's not big, and it's well lit. It's not like a bar. It's like a... Yeah. Kind of, it's between a park, a bar, like a park stop, a bar, and like a, a I don't know, whatever. We, we get I'm it. still very confused. Right. Yeah. 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 But it's just bright. It's just well, very it's, bright. Okay. You know, right. And Fair out enough. of the whole place, everybody's just kind of looking around, and you're looking, and you're like, all right, who's the Porsche Who's the Porsche owner, and who's the uh, Scat Pack owner? Uh, yes. And it took about 0.2 seconds to find the Scat Pack guy. No, it's pretty <laughs> easy, yeah. It was fucking amazing. Yeah. It no, just, we it just, just call those Hellcat owners. Now. Yeah, yeah. Right. You it get just depends on where they do the vajazz line. It's just a Hellcat owner. You're a Hellcat owner. You're fine. Yeah, we get that. All right. Next topic. Is that the PW80 like on steroids? It's a uh, it's a Yamaha BW350. Nope. It's a BMW F450 oh, GS. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh. Sleep playing the home game. That is what Sleepy sounds like when he climaxes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's a fucking looking bike, man. That's a good looking bike. It totally looks like a PW80. I, no. Oh, I have to. BMW I have to. Jr. It is. It's got long, yes. It's got wheelbase it, for days. It's yeah. a it's a it's a 450 desert sled. It's a 450 Desert X. It's a, it is finally redemption for the war crime that was the BMW 310. Yeah. This is the final apology for the most lackluster BMW I have ridden in my goddamn life. And here's the thing. If this thing doesn't sell a billion things, then they can go and punch all the guys mm. on an ADV rider in the face. Yeah, because we been, gave you what you were asking they've been for. They've asking right. for a 400 to 450 cc lightweight fucking so all full off off-road bike for as long as I've been reading that fucking website. And now their God of almighty GSAs are dropping, or the BMW GS people are dropping it into their fucking lap. And watch, it'll be like, Discontinued for lack of sales. And blah, so, blah, blah. so is this a little bajaj? I would totally buy that if it was green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have no idea who built this for them because we know Lon Chin. Well, no. Okay. Strike that. Let me back up. I know exactly who built this for them. Lon Chin. Well, I'm sure, like, whatever, who built I don't my care. bike, my bike's probably the lower end of the fucking thought, chain, and it's a fucking great bike. I, I mean, like, the quality. awesome. I thought Bajaj awesome. did the 310. This is not the 310. Oh. And this case is not a 310 case. Mm-mm. Mm. So I'm going to lean towards Lon Chin on Lon this Chin. one. I'm going to lean on this. And this has more than one cylinder. And we know that Bajaj uh, hates anything with more yeah, than one cylinder. Yeah, this is true. So since Bajaj hates anything with more than one cylinder, I got to lean to the Chinese on this one. Okay. So I'm thinking, and by the way, did somebody say 48 horsepower? Mm-hmm. <gasps> That's got to be a lie. That's got to be a lie. There's just no way that can be anything remotely truthful Hmm. i now have a problem because i kind of want to own this despite its extremely fucking stupid headlight or is the headlight does it have the the x does it have the anus headlight it has half a headlight does it have the starfish missing a couple legs yes the cat asshole so is is this the uh successor to the g4 starfish yeah is Ah, this the successor to the g450x it is. It's a wide chocolate star. I think it is. I think I, this is I the still, I think this is the successor to the cross country. I still have a I still have a real soft spot for the G four fifty. But imagine if the G four fifty had sixteen more horsepower yeah. and weighed sixty pounds less. Yeah. I'm gonna wait till you buy one <laughs> then I'm gonna ride it. So we have to wait till one of my customers buys one. Correct. And then we get Correct. to buy one. And then we get to ride it. Yeah. I actually like this. I do too. Uh yeah. I, I like this. Well, you know, and considering small displacement BMWs of I, like, but I they've also been fairly decently ones. priced. Did too. you read three the, times? We're not ridiculous. Did you for read a the quote? Here's oh. the quote. Here's the quote. that's going to piss off Tom <laughs> where the smaller GS 310 GS. I'm sorry. While the smaller G 310 GS is built in partnership with an Indian company, TVS. Right. Current owners of Norton TBS. Motorcycles. That is a dig right there. By the way, in case no, you weren't sure, in case you weren't sure if the British could throw shade, they just throw shade <laughs> oh, yeah. very fucking Britishly. You know what? You know what I find funny? TVS, because that was that wasn't that uh, LML. TVS became 
Yeah. Well, for a moment. But TVS was the car company. Right. Right. Exactly. Uh, and the bullet train company. It's right, right. Right. Current owners of Norton Motorcycles. The new 450 has been developed in-house using lightweight materials such as magnesium lead. What? What? No. It's got to be... Developed no, in house using magne- materials such as magnesium, Comma. magnesium hyphen lead or lead by project manager Sepp Machler. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> so what they've done is they've done everything except tell you who builds the bitch. They said it's developed in house using lightweight materials such as magnesium. I don't care that you used unicorn farts when you made the fucking thing. Tell me where you made it, and they're not. Mm-hmm. They're not right. But here's what they are telling you. It ain't TVS. No. Which means it ain't Bajaj. So to answer Tom's question, as we suspected, Bajaj is good for one cylinder. India is good for one cylinder. If you want more than one cylinder and you want it cheap, you're going to be visiting China. Who's, who's making KTMs? CF Moto. CF Moto. You don't, well. Um, these guys have loved luncheon. Lon- okay. Yeah. Cause long, cause you're, these guys you're, have a reputation using luncheon. Yeah. Your, your yeah. 800 is luncheon. Yes, so. it is. Yeah. The 800 is luncheon. Mine yeah, for is sure. a 900. Thank you very much. Okay. Probably you're, also you're still luncheon. I, <laughs> I, I don't Look, we fuck. love it. We hey, think it's great. Hey, sleepy, yeah, sleepy, sleepy, your 1000 you didn't buy is a luncheon. <laughs> No, the 1,000 is four cylinders. Still me? Yeah. No, no, that's no, not I there was a twin. No, SR1000 well, RS1. It depends. There's all, now oh, there's God fucking damn all it. the different numbers. I fucking dude. hate yeah. that. Yeah, so you got the XR, which could be a twin. No, no, and then could, you have the SXR. Whatever, SXR which is a four cylinder. Yeah, the, yeah. the R, what is the R1000 SS or whatever the fuck <laughs> it is? The one that gives me this masturbatorial fucking images is the M1000 SR. It's like the fucking, it's like my Tuano, but a BMW, but it's got wings and it's black and it's the M version. Is that four cylinder? <laughs> Yeah, and it's like 226 horsepower. Ooh, I have to have it. We know I'm that's already not making Chinese. decisions. Yeah, I like that. My that one spleen that, has proved to be one, lucrative. That one might still be Eastern European versus. Yeah, I Chinese. think you're right. I think yeah. you're absolutely right. But it's sexy. To Sleepy's credit, dismay. No, fuck it. I agree with Sleepy. The F450 GS yeah. is boner fuel. Oh yeah. yeah. And as much as our friend Dave Nolan has. You know, an off-road, low-production BMW off-road motorcycle. Must be H2, right? Or the yeah, whatever. The HP. The HP. Yeah. HP. Yeah. Which this really kind of looks like it, but like I think it looks better. It down. Yeah. Yeah. I think it looks more proportionate. I think it looks better put together. Because well, yeah, yeah. Let, let's face facts. Really, at, really at this point, every motorcycle manufacturer under a thousand, a thousand cc is the best way to say it. Cause that's kind of, the I think price you're right. Point. Yeah. I think literally that's the deal. it just comes down to what plastics and yep. forks do you want on your lawn chain motor? And not only that, but like another thousand bucks added to the price. They put the stripies on the wheels. Right, exactly. right there. Boom. Done. Exactly. Cause, Cause at this, <laughs> at this, at this right point, <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm going to say something. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to say something. If it's Yamaha or Honda, we'll put gold rims on it for an yeah, extra yeah, 12 exactly. Honda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say something. Ducati, Ducati started this shit. Dodge picked it up. So Dodge started fucking striping out some of their fucking rims. The dude who sold you your fucking Pacifica fucking got into striping. It's a Previa, out. Dick. Previa, okay. <laughs> it's a Previa. But it's got, it's got so many fucking Adidas stickers on it. Oh, Rene, no. Or Merritt calls it. The tennis shoe. Well, the, Merit's the, like, are you taking the tennis shoe to work this morning? I'm like, the, what the his, fuck are you talking the about? The hysterical <laughs> thing is like, if you roll that thing in, you have, f- what, four Previas now? Three or four? I don't know. It's, they're all. The, I'm sorry, the Estima. It's it inventory. I think I've got, the I got, Estima? I've got two supercharged Previas. I've got the one I just got. Right, yeah. And I think there might be another. Yeah, there might be another estimate. The estimates are narrow. You so really the estimates have, are narrow and the previews are wide. You really have a thing for the for this this van. Oh no no no! no I will not hide that. No, I have you, a very. You have this is your fetish. It's not a fetish. It's kink. a fucking religion. It's a kink, dude. <laughs> okay, I can haul six to eight people. Right. In air conditioned comfort, you can now hold twenty seven twenty seven square feet of sunroof. Yeah, no, oh no, I yeah. love the new one with the full glass. Roof. All glass. Oh yeah, no, okay. it is. It is the Oldsmobile Delta eighty eight, and I can do bands. all that with a sideways four cylinder Toyota motor oh, yeah. that hides in the middle that nobody can figure out where the motor is. <laughs> right? Oh, they're great. Yeah, no, change oil. It's, it's amazing. Just gotta take out the passenger seat. But the reality is, I walk out and there's like seven of these in the front yard. I'm like. Okay, oh, so the real be, problem is my hearse count has gotten out of control. That's true. Your her, what do you have to four now? I got four hearses. 
The only good, good news is I only have one ornate. How long size. is that new one you bought? 23 feet. That thing is huge. That bitch is long. <laughs> dude, I drive some long shit. That is like the party some boat. Long like shit. Like, like, I keep yeah. waiting for there to be a dude at the very back of it with an extra steering wheel. <laughs> when we kind of... We to hook kind me around of, corners yeah, and shit. We, 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 Don't go downtown of, Cleveland with that thing. It's fun. We yeah, kind of need to get rid of, rid of the building you're in now and buy a like... Like one with lifts yeah, and stuff yeah, in it, like so one across the street that used to be fucking whatever the four yeah. dealer, yeah. Because <laughs> when I when when I'm when I'm like, well, hey, let's just, just let's just let this economy get proper fucked for a little while, <laughs> and I'm sure I can slide right, right into that old four dealership. Because yeah. I'm like, well, I'm getting a little bit bored in the back, and I'm waiting on parts, and you're like, well, I need somebody to work on my Mercedes hearse. I'm like, well, I guess I'm your guy. Fine. <laughs> All right. So with this Fine. thing, with the BMW yeah. here. Since the the GS three ten had like thirteen versions, so you yeah. had like the ADV version. Yeah. The oh, yeah. Are they gonna this do do this up so you have like a roadish version? It, and then it a, is BMW. They love to. Have they, is this just straight fucking off road? There are thirty one different variants of the R nine T. Right, 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 right. Uh, I, Including uh, our favorite and the R nine Turban. Yep. Yeah. Which is the R nine T Urban? Which how they didn't see that coming <laughs> is beyond me. <laughs> And the and the weird well, thing same is, with Jay Anus. well, the, Jay Anus. the the, the R nine S Eek or the R nine Seek. Depending yeah. on how you are, so you could have a turban or you can have a Seek. Turban a Seek. It's fine. They come with a knife. What was, it the, one, what was knife. the one from last week? It was a Twinsy or the something SE, the Twixy. I don't remember. Fuck. Well, it's like the B the it, it's, CC or? it's like the Harley FLART. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Flart. Flart. Yeah. The, well, more importantly, the Harley D bag. D bag. <laughs> Which is the other one. <laughs> hey, I didn't name it. It wasn't my job. Oh, yeah. The, uh, okay. Back to shit that's happening and that we should probably be aware of. Uh, apparently, it is impossible to sell a full priced, full sized electric motorcycle. Yeah. Mm, yeah, probably so. So, yeah. about two years late to the memo. Yep. Zero and Livewire both had a come to Jesus moment at the exact same time, and they both said, Hey, China, could you help us unfuck this pig? And they did. And so the solution was to offer a new motorcycle that um, costs half as much money, or in, in Zero's case, a third as much money. And they did. And they did come out with, in fact, a super cheap ish. Motorcycle. So Zero's answer was to apparently, and I'm, I'm not 100% sure about this, but I'm pretty sure Zero just straight up ripped off uh, Suron because the Suron Light B motorcycle, which looks like it looks at $4,400. I'm going to just throw this up here so our folks at home can appreciate this. Oh, yeah. All right. So we know well, what that is. So yeah. when I pull this up for the folks at home, and uh, we we just take a quickie look at this thing. Uh, I'm going to tell you the first thing that I'm going to tell you about this particular motorcycle is it's not a fucking motorcycle because it doesn't have a title. Yeah. And it's yeah. not street fucking legal. Yeah. Oh. So. It looks like you'd just get, come with an annoying helmet and a kid. You know. <laughs> Sorry, man. Fucking no. Or a the, helmet the, and an annoying kid. The, oh, yeah. the real big problem with this with the Chiron, Chiron Light B is the fact that it does not have pedals. Because if it did, it would literally be a moped. No, it wouldn't because it goes 53 goddamn Dude, miles per hour. this looks like a broken, Jesus. like when Jeremy McGrath was the lead for fucking the Yamaha or whatever. And mm -hmm. then like Walmart was selling the first, my first pedal bike fucking version of a fucking <laughs> bicycle. And it was already broken and the front fender fell off. That's what it looks like. It looks like the broken plastic off of a kid's toy. If you're a BM, if you're a fellow who likes mountain bikes, this is called a jumper. Right. Yeah. This is okay. terrible. So this is a jumper mountain bike. Uh, it's an electric motorcycle. And I'm going to leave this up for just a second because I want everyone to get a good long look at the Suron. It's and offensive. Yes, and yes, we know the chat can't see this, but you know what Hold Chiron on, guys. Light I'm going to give you enough time. It's Wait, offensive. Hang on, little baby birds. Uh, it's a Suron, S-U-R-R-O-N, yep. Light B or Suron X. They gave up on the Light B name. It was oh. too Asian. All right. So here we have the Suron X. And the Suron X is available in the United States, delivered to your house for $4,400. Fair enough. Okay, good. 
suck that up real good. I want you to understand and and really get a look at that bike and and remember what it looks like. Oh, Aaron says drink. Drink. Why did we chastise Tom? Yeah, y'all chastise, chastise me. I, what did we chastise you for? I don't know. I missed that one. Probably sure on. Come on, Aaron, thing. get with it. Uh, all right. So so Zero just announced at ICMA that they too, in fact, were partnering, <laughs> uh, or they were going to build a new. I mean, there's always a good reason to drink. Kinder, it's just not because you chastise me, <laughs> right? That's, this is also true. Um, that zero was going to show up, and zero was going to do a kinder, gentler, less expensive uh, bicycle or motorcycle. Mm. I don't know. It's tough because they don't have. They can't be titled with, with no. Pedal, They're not street legal, but with no pedals, it's not really a right. moped or a bicycle. Exactly. So when we look at the uh, zero version of the exact same bike, it even looks more mountain bikey. Well, there's a, yeah. Well, because if. So those, they're selling two versions, the XE and the XB. Those of us who remember a zero from back in the early aught days, yeah. they were mountain bikes with electric motors. They, they were actually were. really cool. Like I'm not gonna lie, it, I should have bought I should have bought ADs. It was just meant to be an, a motorcycle you ride in your backyard yeah. and the police wouldn't get called, yeah. right? And then yeah, Zero really decided they wanted to become a real motor, a real boy. Right. And created real motorcycles, and then they got really overcomplicated. Yeah. And so the Zero Electric Motorcycles XB, um, one, kind of weird, but did I tell you the Suron cost $4,400? Yes. Yeah. I did. Did I tell you that the Zero cost $4,200? Interesting. Mm. Huh. That's weird. Yeah. That they're that close. Meow. So I did some up close photos. I, I really did some ridiculous deep dive analysis on this shit. And they are very fucking similar. Um, they're so similar that it makes one wonder about who's the daddy and who's the mommy. Uh, but they share a whole lot of the same genetic code, I think. But the long and short of it is that. One is $4,200, one is $4,400. Hey, what they do have in common is that neither of them are motorcycles in the strictest definition of you can legally ride it on the road. Yeah, no way, right? dude. These are not le road legal motorcycles. So these yeah. fall under the category of toys. The $6,500 one goes 53 miles per hour. And the uh, $4,200 one goes 47 miles per hour. Now... The news event for Zero is that these are, in fact, way cheaper than their normal stuff. But their FX and their FXE are in the neighborhood of 10 grand, but they are 80 pounds feet of torque. They are 88 miles per hour. They are motorcycles. They have done all the heavy lifting to be street legal as motorcycles in these United States of America. These things, the XB and the XE, are not. They are not. They are off-road bikes only. They are for off-road, F-O-U-O, -O, for off-road use only. They've got adjustable suspension. They got all that cool shit. So does the Suron X, or Suron X, I'm sorry. Um, it's just coincidental, I'm sure, that the Zero is called the X, B and XE, and the Suron is called the X. I'm sure that's just coincidental. I'm sure it's just coincidental that the motors look damn near identical. I'm sure that's coincidental. I'm sure there's a lot of things about these two bikes that are coincidental. I'm also sure it's coincidental that Zero's, big, or Zero's biggest partner now is in China and is called Zhang Shen. Uh, that's probably purely coincidental too. So uh, I'm sure they're not at all the same exact motorcycle. But if you do have to buy one of these two and you want to buy a motorcycle that's not a legal motorcycle and it's for off-road use only, I would recommend buying the Zero because at least they're an American company and you can feel good about keeping an American company in operation. It, it'll feel better than buying a Suron. And then service. You save I mean, 200 bucks. You've had a decent luck with like dealing with their service, right? Like, I mean, as being the person that was servicing stuff. I will not comment on that. <laughs> All right. I see what you did there, Sleepy. I appreciate it, but I will not play along. Uh, that's great. Now into the other world, Harley Davidson and their company that they sometimes own and sometimes don't own, depending on whether you're paying them or taking money from them. It's Livewire. Hey, Harley. 
I'd like to talk to you about Livewire. We don't own that company. Hey, Harley, I'll give you a check for your company called Livewire. Yeah, that's yes, ours. <laughs> Oh, you got $60 million to give us from the American government? Yeah, the live wire is our shit. Yeah. Um, oh, well, you you only sold 15 bikes last year and you're in complete failure? That's not us. No. No, no that's not us. No, that's no, not no, Harley. No, no. That's not us. Not No, sir. Not at all. Those assholes have proven that even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. Their new motorcycles, live wire. Live wire, we know, is the... The live wire. There's also the S2 Mulholland, which is a, mm -hmm. a, a smaller live wire. Um, live wire has decided to just accept the fact that they're getting a shit ton of money from Kimco and just admit that they're bi curious because their bike is about a fucking motor scooter, man. That's all there is to it. Their bike is a motor scooter. This thing is purely a scooter. And it, I don't think Harley Davidson has made anything that identifies as a scooter since the Harley Topper. <laughs> right? All right. Uh, but when I look at this, it's hard for me to say anything other than, well, that's a scooter. So wait, which one is what? So you well, got there's this, like, two different skeleton fucking okay. ruckus looking well, thing. Well, there's two different ones and you might get both if you're not careful. Right. Right. These are both using the Del Mar chassis. These are both using mm. the same thing. Um, they're just two different I'm, versions. I'm, I'm just amazed that, that they have upgraded the Vectrix that way. Dude, they made it. <laughs> Dude, they did it without calling it. That's a his and hers. That if is a his and hers. If yeah, you're, you're a you're Harley right. guy and you fucking yeah. finally have your RV, yeah. and they're like, well, live wires are dumb, but we can put it on the RV. Oh, that look, is, honey, they make one for you, and then is, they got a rough is, one for me. Is, you cannot convince me that's not a Vectrix. That is a Judge Dredd transportation system, yeah, is yeah, all yeah. that is. There is no excuse for that vehicle other than just, well, okay. Let's just get curvy. It looks That's like the like, earbuds yeah. fell out of it. <laughs> it looks like the earbuds. <laughs> and then the other version is the um, Honda Big Dog or whatever that damn thing, Bulldog. The Honda Bulldog that we saw 15 years ago that we were like, oh, yeah, 250cc Honda. Uh, what do they call that thing? A Big Ruckus? Big Ruckus. Yeah. But it was a Bulldog and it was this. And it was this, but it had a gas motor. This has an electric motor. And I got to say... I don't hate it. Uh, yeah, it's not terrible. I don't know. I like this. I like, like that the right there. Yeah. That right there. Okay. All right. Look at it. It has little pannier holders. It does. Oh, it's it all does. ADV out. Oh, it's designed to be oh, a yeah. silent ADV. Oh, yeah. It is. It has got BW350 wheels. Yeah, it does. Right? It's got all the chonkies. It's got every bit of chonkies. They've managed to put a tire on there that will be completely useless in the mud. Yeah. I've never sure. seen a tire. I can hear that tire getting stuck right now. You know, it's crazy. You know, at some point yeah. the designers had double headlights on the front and then they're like, we can't. No, we got to go high low. We got to go high low. They were going to put a set of ruckus lights on there. Yeah. yeah. They should have. Yeah. Oh, and they, they should have called should've. it the E-Ruckus. Yeah. Yeah. And then we would have called it the Erectus. Right. What's what's another or what's and so like and some people say like oh they're making a ruckus up there but what's another yeah. what's another word for ruckus? A kerfuffle. Oh, that is better. So the reality is the what they made is an electric oh. V Strom, but with a drop tank. Because that's the new V Strom. Oh, that's they the ADV one seven fifty. Yeah. It's Honda's ADV seven fifty adventure scooter, but electric. Oh no, it's the ADV ST, and the ST stands for step through. <laughs> oh, there you go go fuck your hat like that. Seriously, that bike right now. <sighs> I don't hate it. I you know, don't, I don't, I hate, don't it hate it, man. I don't hate it. And again, if I paid full price for this, the silence of the vehicle would be drowned out by my hatred of the money I spent. Well, yeah, right. I get it. I get it's really hard for me to embrace. I, I rode last week, I rode an electric motorcycle. <sighs> and I got to say that, that riding a m marginal Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 was better than riding a 116 pounds feet of torque electric motorcycle. Most different. Yeah. It's just different. Well, 
It's I mean, like the difference between a Harley and a sport bike. And the a different and saying a, different is the no shit statement of the century. Well, yeah, of course. But I'm going to say it was better. I'm going to say it was better to squeeze the dead dinosaurs than it was to wrangle the pixies. Like I feel like riding, and as much as you guys know, I'm no fan of the Interceptor 650. I believe that it is the Team U version of a W800 Kawasaki, mm-hmm. right? I believe that it is the Team U version of a Ka- our Triumph Bonneville, yep. whatever, right? It is truly like, oh, you wanted a Bonneville, but you could only afford the generic version thereof. And I rode the fuck out of an Interceptor 650 last week. I pinged that thing off the rev limiter way too many times. I cranked it from Porco to my house at maximum chat, teetering on 100 miles per hour the entire way. I never shifted when you're supposed to. I always shifted at the point. And it was good. I'm well, not going to say great. It was good. Well, that's the thing. Like, like the audible part of a motorcycle yeah. is a very big part of it. Like, yeah. I think I committed a felony with the pipe I put on my Tuano. Yeah. And I mean, it, the visceral feeling no, no. of that thing. The public thinks you committed a felony. Yeah, I'm yeah. loving the fuck You out of probably yeah, just made yeah. it better. Yeah. <laughs> right. But dude, when like you're fucking on that thing and you got a V4 fucking thing and you, yeah. it's like, okay, if it was electric, yeah, I'd have that torque of whatever, you know? What but did Hunter S. Thompson that, say? Hunter S. Thompson said, that's the song of the sausage creature. Yeah, yeah. dude. It's, you right? fucking hear everything I, and it's you know, popping and snapping. And it makes like everything, like it makes, it makes what should be dangerous sound dangerous. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know? Like the, I don't, I appreciate the absolute rip your arms out of the socket power that the Zero SRF had yeah. and the Zero SRS have and the new Zero DSRX has. It is when you put that thing in sport mode and you let it hunt, it will, it will fucking get you to speed super duper fast oh yeah but it does it silently it does it effortlessly and smooth it does it smoothly Which is and weird. it never scares you power without but, vibration is yeah. weird it is just a weird but it's never there's no point in the relationship where you're like oh boy this is gonna get away from me no but I also never feel like any of my Ryobi, Ryobi tools are going to fuck me up. You know, you know, <laughs> right? Having having ridden the so- having ridden the proper sausage creature, yeah, and having ridden electric bike, yeah. Between the two, I'll yeah. take the electric bike. Yeah, I love the sausage creature. Right. I've owned it, nine hundred Super yeah. Sport. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, but the power delivery and the comfort and everything else of a zero yep. is amazing. And when I take a zero SRS and I turn off all the things. Which takes a, a second. But when I turn off all the things and I just let it hunt, it does wheelie. It yeah. actually wheelies yeah. really fucking great. And that's it'll that's, turn the back tire into smoke. Yeah. It does it really great. It does all those things in its belt drive and it's quiet. It's amazing. And it's reliable. It's amazing how quickly electric bikes, ones with power, yeah. will smoke a back oh, tire. Yeah. Remember last year at Mid Ohio to do with the Stark? And it went from he was like, they're going to start. And it was like from nothing to like yeah. melting rubber yeah. blowing on people. And Every like- single time I sell one of my customers a zero, we go out in the parking lot and I've given them all the tutorial. I give them the 20 minute spiel. And then I say, okay, here we are. I said, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to leave the bike in eco mode because you're new. I'm going to leave the bike in eco mode. I'm going to hold the front brake with my own two fingers. I'm just going to two finger the front brake and with no wheel chalk, no Quaker steak and lube, no bleach, no burnout pit. I'm going to do something in one second that is going to give you all the respect you're ever going to need of how quickly this bike will put you in the hospital <laughs> in eco mode. This is truth. And I hold the front brake and I crack the throttle and the back tire instantly goes from rubber to liquid, to smoke. Mm -hmm. It crosses all three transitions, comes this far short of entering a fourth dimension, (laughs) and then I back out of it. And the guy just goes, what the fuck was that? (laughs) And I said, that was a smoky burnout with no clutch, 
No cheers of applause. Yep. Right. No wet t-shirts. It just happened. Yep. Just like that. That's how much torque there is in, by the way, the cheapest, lightest, entry-level zero electric motorcycle yep. I can sell you. Yep. And you showed up today on a motorcycle that should you want to make smoke out of the back tire, you need a confidence building in session. You need to have, huh. right? You need to have a, a pep talk from your friend. Yep. You need a condor wheel chalk. You need a sque squirty bottle full of some slippery substance, right? Just to turn your back tire into smoke. I just did it in the parking lot on literally a whim. Having having watched no spotter. Having watched Dean on a three hundred five GPZ. Yeah. Slalom. Yeah. The rear tire. Yeah. Through traffic, yeah. like it was nothing. It was nothing. I really want to see him on like the X. Electric motorcycles are a very strange thing yeah. that most people who ride motorcycles aren't ready for to tell you that the three of them that have been totaled at my shop, that's right, hmm. $37,000. Oh, yeah. Because people that have motorcycle licenses who showed up riding motorcycles, carrying helmets, decided that an electric motorcycle was too much for them. Right? Three. Yeah. That's something you should pay attention to. Oh, okay. We were, uh, the guys who were with us at the AMA Vintage Days when we did the Zero demo and saw a guy who'd been riding motorcycles for 40 odd years of his life, whiskey throttle, a silent motorcycle into a group of spectators. Yep. Where he... Thank God only injured five people. But you know what? I think that comes yeah. down to the fact that like, so like when you're on a, uh, a, an ice bike yeah. and you hit the gas, you have usually, even with a scooter, yeah. you have that, that moment of <laughs> like, you can, okay, things yeah. are happening. Oh, yeah. right. yeah. oh, wait, I better let off. Yeah. But yeah. with an electric bike, there's yeah. nothing. Oh, no. It's just smooth, no, smooth. Oh, fuck. All the power. Torque is like, at zero. Tigers, zero. tigers always make a noise before they kill you. Right. Gorillas never do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hippo will never growl or let you know it's about to dead you. But they do. And they do that more frequently than tigers do. Tigers make a big show of the whole thing. Yeah. And they give you ample opportunity to gr just unfuck the AO. But hippos just straight up murder your ass Dude, they're for big. swimming. I didn't know how big they were until I saw one. They're big motherfuckers. And they're fast. Man. Yeah. But a zero bike will fucking unsubscribe you from life <laughs> yes. so fast. Yeah. You won't know it's coming. Meanwhile, a gasoline powered motorcycle from the time you make a bad decision till the tire starts getting weird is like enough time to get out of the deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's enough time to pull the clutch in and basically think about life and the decisions saying. you like, made. At some point with the gas bike, the yeah. visceral, the, the visceral sensations of the yeah. bike <clears throat> let you know that you're oh, getting yeah. into a dangerous speed. You might be entering a, a speed and a situation that you might not be prepared for. Were you at the motorcycle show with us when the guy decided he'd launch one into people? Oh, at the, the ramp. At the thing. IX Center yeah, show? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we were at the IX Center show, and we had all these zero electric motorcycles lined up. And the powers of be were like, yeah, you know, we're going to put the keys in the bike so people can turn them on and see the displays and whatever. And I was like, I think that's a really bad idea because these bikes don't let you know before they murder people. They're just <laughs> yep. silent ninjas, right? Yep. They just straight up kill a motherfucker and you don't even know about it. And so we're just having this chat and all of a sudden this uh, 120 foot pounds of torque DSR just decides to launch out of our paddock, like out of our prescribed, you know, 20 by 60 area. And it just launches out into the uh, thoroughfare of people and just straight up misses a lady with a baby carriage by like 16 inches and instead just straight hate fucks a 40 year old guy <laughs> and falls over on its side, rear wheel spinning at about yep. 80 miles an hour at the same time and i ran over there and grabbed you know turned the key off shut the kill switch and uh all of a sudden the guy from zero was like yeah maybe we better take the keys out of those bikes and i was like you think you think <laughs> right i mean straight up you think that'd be a good idea and the weird thing was like you know the motorcycle show oh, yeah. the ambient noise level in that place is about 96 decibels yeah just cool. ambient just being there because every time we tried to record anything there, it was always it's like, awful. Fuck, man. It's, it's awful. Like, <laughs> it's just awful. Like, oh, you turn the mic on. The mic's already fucking pinning. But we, when that Zero just jumped out and, and tried to kill somebody, right? The, the like Zero's like, I just don't like his shirt. 
He's got to be fucked. And we were all very surprised. You know, we were all a bit gobsmacked. But that's what a zero is. That's what electric motorcycles are. Electric motorcycles are literally a weapon that is armed with one in the chamber. Don't point at anything you don't wish to, wish to destroy. Meanwhile, a regular motorcycle, you, you take Sleepy's Aprilia, is a shit-hot, terrifying motorcycle. But he's got a clutch. He's got a kill switch. He's got all kinds of things, including an auditory, an auditory notification system that alerts the neighborhood when something bad is about to happen. You know what's funny? I've owned a lot of fucking bikes yeah. over the years, a lot of high-powered bikes, all yeah. this shit. But the fucking reputation of that bike preceded it so much <laughs> that it fucking, it took me like about a month and a half, two months of riding it to get used to it enough that I wasn't scared to go out and ride it. Like I'd have to like build that. I'd be like, okay, today a day for the Toronto. I think I think, yeah. You know, and then, you know, I'd be out there just like riding it normally, right. not in the twisties. Right. And I'm like, well, it is just a motorcycle. Look at that. Ah. And then I'd get back all confident. And then two days later, I'd forget that it was right. just a normal bike. And yeah. I'd still be like, oh, I'm going to take the Toronto. I'll probably take the BMW. That one's a little scary to take out. <laughs> So, <laughs> because the Tawana should have a knob on the top that says groceries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, it does. Yeah, it you have the mode. If you have, if you have it in rain mode, that's like you. Well, you probably go to the track on. Right. And then if you have it on race mode, that's just like holy fuck. You're no, you're not good enough. That's yeah, no, That's hurt. again. That checks to see if your name's on the side of somebody else's right. truck. Right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Phil. Phil. Yeah. Hang on a second. All right. So Joshua Clark. All right. Says so in older podcasts when you were still a dealer. All right. The, for. Zero. Yeah. The conversational electric seemed much yeah, yeah. more positive, and now it seems a little bit negative in general. Yes, that's exactly right. And if you're a, if you're a listener, you'll understand that um, we had a bit of a change of heart with zero. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I, this is all public. I'll be and happy to tell anybody. Is, yeah, and this right. is this is the thing. And then you know another uh, Zimbo twelve twelve. Funny thing is, I found the zero DSR extremely. Let's see here. I can't read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Easy to ride. Nothing feels better aggressively exiting a corner in yep. than in an electric bike. He's right. Because yep. electric electric is the linear curve on electric is straight. Like you, it is a you light get, switch. You get <laughs> exactly. That's literally the definition well, of linear. And then not, the curve is the opposite it, of linear. Well, there is no well, linear no, curve, it is not dude. a light switch. It is not on off. Right. It literally. The, well, that's um, expo. So you can set the exposition. But yeah. linear means straight. Curve means not straight. So a linear get, curve is fucking. I think it just. I think you've created infinite energy because it just cancels itself <laughs> out into a fucking loop. <laughs> <laughs> what's the. Uh, what's the. What's the. What's uh, the. Knob. Dude, once in a while, so bump together. It's a reestat. It's, it it's a fucking reestat. It's a reestat. It's a potentiometer. Potentiometer. Right? I mean, we have the words. Let's use them. Yeah. Um, science is great. The point with electricity is this: that the uh, the motor wants to do one thing, and that is to turn yes. super fast right yes. now. Then you have a series of computers involved that are there to help keep you alive. Right. If any of those computers fail you will no longer be alive. But there are other computers behind those computers to say that if those computers fail, we're not going to let the bike do any bike shit. That's how it works. That's, that's fair. And there's nothing wrong with that. The downside is when the people that make the motorcycle go, hey, are you aware that we can use the information about our clients to generate these things called money? Yeah. If we share them with other people like where the people are going and what they're doing and what kind of trips they're taking and all that information about well, can you our imagine clients. How, can you imagine how valuable that'd be? Can like you imagine what, what stops how motorcycle? valuable that would be? Dude, what, what, yeah, motor, like where our motorcycle is stopping for snacks? How do we promote to these fucking guys? Right. How many where, miles well, a day are our motorcycles now, riding? I am now getting an ad for a Google Pixel Watch 3. On, speaking of which, well, on yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the, and well, if you say zero three more times, you're gonna need ads for zeros. Yeah. So we know that, and, and that's where the problem comes in. Is somebody said, "Wouldn't it be great if this motorcycle could not rely on the customer to do its updates? Yeah. Could in fact do its updates on its own, some on its lonesome, without your permission, in the garage, in the middle of the night, without you asking, and run your battery yeah. from ninety three percent down to nothing in less than thirty days." Yeah. 
When meanwhile, what they marketed was, hey, you live in Minnesota? We did a test in Minnesota. We proved how good our bikes were in Minnesota. We proved that if you park your bike with 95% on the battery and you go to Florida, which is something everybody does, and you come back from Florida three months later, your bike will be at 91%. You've lost 2% in three goddamn months because that's a trick that lithium does better than anything else. Yes, you win. Now, somebody else comes in and goes, wouldn't it be great if this motorcycle updated itself 15 times a minute? And that burns electricity. As it opens up a cellular connection, goes out to the internet, looks for updates, and tells the internet what you've been doing, what porn you've been looking at, whatever. How whiskey throttled you are, who fucking cares? But here's what happens, is your battery goes from 93% to 20% in 35 goddamn days. But that's not in the owner's manual because the owner's manual is a thumb drive and it's a living document that you got when you bought your motorcycle. But since then, they changed the rules and you left your motorcycle for three months alone like you did last year. Wait, did you, did you ignore simply... the text that you got from Zero telling you to go and read the 57-page the manual again? I'd feel bad if you did miss that, but you didn't miss that because they didn't fucking send it. Why oh, my goodness. Yeah. They just have storage mode. They did, John. It's called winter mode. Yeah. So if you left your bike unfucking attended for 30 days, the bike went to sleep. The, and it quit waiting for you to come and show and turn the bike on. The the biggest problem with EVs, doesn't matter if it's motorcycle or cars in this country, is that the manufacturers of EVs in this country seem determined to destroy EVs because they're stupidity. I just think that it's very simple. You are the product. Yes, absolutely. And everything that you do has a value to it. And when a company, when a manufacturer, when a company says, "Hey, we're going to put a uh, we're going to put a cell phone in our electronic device that says that this cell phone can then help the consumer by getting updates over the air or getting in touch with tech support, no matter where you are," and then somebody else goes, "And remember, it can also send us all the information from your cell phone through the app, and we can spy on you for the rest of your life." That's where it failed. Where it failed was my customers that were great. Customers that enjoyed their bikes went out to their bike one day and their bike was dead. And the zero said, well, your bike is dead. And I, I know it's dead. I tried plugging it and charging it. And it wouldn't charge. Yeah. You mean it wouldn't charge? No, it wouldn't charge. Well, it must've been super <clears throat> duper dead. Yeah, I know. I plugged it in for like three days and it wouldn't take a charge. Oh, I'm sorry. It's super duper triple dead. Well, great. How do I make it undead? Well, take the batteries out and we'll mail you some new ones. Well, that's good. That's going to be free, right? No, that's $8,000. Yep. Mm. What do you get when you cross a donkey with a motorcycle? A yam hee haw. In that two God. hours and 28 minutes. Oh. All right. So, <laughs> so, those of you playing the live game got that for free. <laughs> Anybody I under think, $10? I think it just died. It died right now at the it end. Died? No, it it's, died? It's, it says it's oh, still alive. Oh, well, Maybe the camera, camera checked died. out. No, no, no. The camera died. So it must have not been able to keep up with the power. So at the last second, it died. I think it did. Because right. it still says live and it's still counting. So I think maybe that. Right. Hey, can you guys out there still hear us? Somebody chime in. Oh, I've got no. It's not nothing. Nothing. Nobody. I've got, I've got the circle. It might be Wi-Fi I, here. Yeah. Okay. I went on. to an emotional wedding the other day. It was emotional. Even the cake was in tears. Hey! Uh, yeah, I think it's dead. I think it actually, I think it just like committed I'm, suicide. I'm getting circles oh, here. No. Yeah. Yeah, it must have. It, it probably wasn't right. enough. It probably went down and couldn't keep I up I don't anymore. even know. It's I don't probably, know. Probably well, a rental unit. Well, and you know what? Two and a half hours, it wasn't that bad. That's so. not too shabby. No. That's not too shabby. So for the folks at home that are playing along with the, you know, people that didn't, you know, they're early adopters. They get all the good shit. Yeah. So if you're a late adopter, if you're still at home watching your Betamax and just waiting for things to get truly better, I'm going to tell you, it's good it paid off because you're going to get the last minute of content that the YouTube people didn't get. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, let's see. Hang, That's settle, how you get wait, fans wait, these settle days. Down, well, no, settle so, down. So, so we've been encumbered by we've been encumbered tech, technology. Yeah. We have in fact found out that we're not allowed to go trap and ski shooting. 
this year because our trap and skeet field is being redone. But, but somebody mentioned that, that there's that an indoor that. place. Yeah. I don't believe that one. I agree with John. I think they're reworking the other range. Yeah. But that field has been that. Field. That field has been that field. Since the fucking to, I was about Apaches to say, also, were there, how, yeah. how many people are patrolling that Apaches. field at the exact two hours that we're there on a Sunday? We've never seen anybody who wasn't Amish. No, so we've seen Libyan guys with automatic twelve gauge shotguns, yeah. wasting money, not hitting with jack automated shit. bird throwers that were like like machine gun esque. Yeah, we we, we collected twelve hundred <laughs> fucking things. We went yeah. over we went over to their 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 bird zone, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you that the Navy hasn't successfully landed as many birds yeah. as they did. <laughs> they painted like, the field orange. It was amazing how many untouched broken. birds. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'll never buy a bird again. I'll just go where they go <laughs> yeah. and shoot their shit yeah. twice. So. But we've also never seen an ODNR guy, a cop, uh, anybody show up and be like, hey, guys, want to make sure everybody's safe and you're not drinking and shooting each other in the dicks. No, <laughs> we had like four Amish guys yep. on, on what do they call those? Uh, big wheel scooters? Yoder cycles. Yeah. Yoder cycles. Yoder <laughs> cycle. <laughs> exactly one Amish power. Uh, zero ah. pedals, zero chains. <laughs> Just low rider ass with big ass wheels. And they were there. We saw those guys, but we never saw anybody resembling an authority. No. And we're just like, John's like, if it flies, it dies. One handed. <laughs> <Shabang."> <laughs> John is shooting shit from other people's camps. Right. And we've never been interfered with by anybody at that particular thing, because I think the idea is. Everybody puts their attention into the the, the yeah. pistol and rifle range yeah. where there's rules and it's supervision intended. and shit like that. But the shotgun, that the quote, hand trap range, which I didn't even know that was what they called it. Yeah. They call it the hand trap range, which again, might as well be called the hand job range because this is a single person event. You're not going to fuck with anybody else, even though we showed up at the electric monstrosity last year. But- I swear to God, if we show up there and we just fucking show up with our gear and shoot shit, I don't think anybody's going to say boo. Now, well, plus we got guns. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if somebody, had if somebody had time to run out there and look and be like, is right. there, is there right. in fact a sign that says? So I went on the ODNR's Facebook page and I just, you know, clickety clickety click. I was like, hey man, not for nothing, but it says that the whole place is under construction until uh, you know the year of Yezu twenty twenty five, but is the hand trap range, which is nothing more than nine acres of unused garbage. Is that still open as if closed was even a thing they could do because the, the, the very limited parking area they have does not yeah. even have ein chain no. to keep you from turning around in there. Uh, we could literally just park on the other side of the ditch and uh, walk across it if you had to. There's I mean, barely a ditch. Unless yeah. they're building like a right. trap house and building like a, you know, a thing. But no. A trap really? house. I hope they're, <laughs> I hope they're not. Uh, I do too. I and and, and you know what? If you're going to build a trap house, then you have to build a skeet house. Yeah. And I know where Sleepy's going to be. <laughs> skeet, 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 skeet. <laughs> the... Uh, I'm convinced that if we just goddamn showed up, nobody'd say boo. Yeah, I say we, but in I, the interest of being cool, I don't want to invite my nieces and nephews and, and the other smaller versions of me to show up to break the law. So what are the rules with Tannerite? <laughs> I'm just asking because I... Wait a second. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Because it depends on how much. <laughs> this seems like a leap <laughs> from where Hold we were. Hold on a second. Well, I was just thinking because I have these big 1,200 millimeter drones that I'm going to fucking just get rid of at some point. So right. I figured we could hang Tannerite off of them and make them moving targets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if they Except accidentally... Except for when the Tannerite goes off... Well, yeah, but then there'll be another bag on top of it so that as it's falling, that's well, rabbit now gets the target. Fucked. Well, yeah, that's fine. Proper fucked? Let's blow them Proper up, Proper fucked. But I want to video it. Yeah, yeah you do. Yeah. I know you do. Yeah. Oh, my God. I thought you were just going to hang, like, No, let's blow shit stuff up. Stuff from These them. things are taking up space in my garage. They are. It's like UFOs. Plus, the FAA was like, so where are you hangering this? I'm like, it's fucking dead. Go hangering? fuck your head. Yeah. I'm not hangering anything. I crashed that bitch years ago. I had to have an end number for right. it. So, yeah. Oh, my Anyways, God. Anyways, yeah, but let's blow That's them ridiculous. fuckers up. Yeah, I, I do agree. And so somebody said indoor. I have never in my life done indoor skeet or indoor trap. Well, I think it kind I of would have to be indoor skeet. Yeah, they're where, open in a place. Where, oh, they are? Yeah, they're open in a place. It's probably electric, though. It's probably like that engaged They shoot electric shooting. guns? Yeah. Virtual bullets? Not real. 
It's I guarantee you. It's like the engaged shit where it's like people yeah, pop it's up light, and it's like yeah, it's and light, it makes yeah. a recoil yeah, and it I does all the things. It's <sighs> just like a flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> a <bit janker. laughs> what? Well, let's do it then. <laughs> oh no, man! If I can't spend at least eighteen cents and hear a boom and watch and watch you miss, <laughs> I have I have never had an electric flashlight. How's that like? <laughs> All right. On that note, <laughs> what is it? Ride something. Oh, uh, ride fast and take chances, people. <laughs> hey, John, get us out of here, baby. Ba 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 